Hello, uh, hello everybody and welcome to round six of the Call to Arms tournament and welcome to Dash 28's live streaming. Uh, today I will be your host. Um, my name's Taz, aka Wedgetail, and I am joined by the dulcet tones of uh, a man whose voice you may be familiar with, uh, and that's Benson. How you doing? G'day champs, doing all right, thanks. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Final okay. game. Well, final yes, round. final round, final round. Uh, not the final game. We've got no. <laughs> like 12 more to go. Yeah, I'm still <laughs> um, here to play mine as well. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're still watching deployment. So we've got uh, Kyle versus Stephen today. Um, mm -hmm. And we've got uh, Stephen Devonish uh, from Canberra is deploying with goblins at the bottom of the screen. Mm -hmm. And we've got Kyle from uh, OHIO, I think. Um, and he is deploying with ogres with Night Stalkers allies from the top. Um, now, is that um, an initialism or is it Ohio? <laughs> it's Ohio, sorry, right. yes. Um, yeah, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's yes, uh, yes, Ohio. Um, yeah, so we will, once the players finish deployment, they'll, they'll jump in and we'll get them to talk through their lists. Um, yep. But yeah, initial thoughts, Benson. Um, uh, we're playing. Are they they're playing two thousand points? Is that right? Two thousand points, salt the earth. So that's seven seven pillage tokens. But the mm. pillage tokens can be burned. Um, okay. Which has to be this has to be my favourite um, scenario in the game, just in mm. terms of the amount of like it forces a spread thing that you can through play force it into like a dominate situation if you you know take and then burn the tokens and mm -hmm. um, yeah no I like it. Mm. Um, Oh, here we go. Um, all right. So got Alex. Um, Looks like, how many drops are in each of the armies? Looks like in goblins each of the have armies, 19. The, yeah, goblins have yeah 19 drops for 26 unit strength, and the other ones have got 11 drops mm, for 21. I was going to say there seems to be quite a uh, a difference with the deployment here in terms of what's remaining to be deployed. But that's how goblins should feel. They should feel like they're always out deploying. Now, I think the ogre list is quite interesting. Uh, it really is. With that Night Stalker um, ally contingent, which is a bit of left field. Um, yeah, I... Um... I've never seen that sort of thing. I mean, I saw Kyle. Kyle's been doing this thing um, where he asks his opponent to mm -hmm. um, uh, to to pick the army, his army. And right. Stephen was apparently his first opponent who said, "Go nuts! Like, choose what you like." Yep. Um, which strikes me as kind of funny, but anyway. Um, and <laughs> then he live streamed. Kyle live streamed himself going through the rolling, like he randomly rolled. To, to pick things. Um, yeah. Not only the particular faction of his army, but the style of army, whether it would be, you know, Monster Mash or um, So that one else. step extra. Yeah, pretty much. And what he's done in this case is he came up with the ogres and then not... Yeah, so I don't know. This is... There's a bunch of stuff. We'll talk about it in the list. Well, actually, I don't know if we'll talk about it in the, in the pregame. We'll literally just run through the list rather than get them to give away any of their strategies. Um, mm -hmm. But things like the Dragon Shard Shield on the Hunters, um, I've not seen that. I like the Dragon Shard Shield as an item. Um, it's pretty cool. I've just never, ever seen anyone run it um, because it just always seems so situational. Especially on something that moves and feels yeah. like it should be moving. Not if you can put it on one of those surgy, surgy units, you can do mm. some some real like shenanigans with it. Um, Maybe you think in the ensnare, like get into position and hold a spot with the ensnare and then defense six yeah if he gets in some difficult terrain although i mean he didn't know what his opponent was bringing so yeah but, i mean it's just unfortunate that up against goblins you're not really worried about the, <laughs> the melee <laughs> <laughs> melee isn't really so much of an issue hmm yeah i keep looking at that that night stalker hello alex bit. hey hey how are you doing gentlemen Good John, morning. Pretty good. Pretty Evening. good. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We're all over the world here. We got coverage everywhere. Um, it's evening for me. Um, looks like I'm I'm into the deployment part of the phase. Is that right? 
Yeah, we're still we're still in deployment. Um, It'll be another half hour before uh, the goblins are finished deploying. Very nice. <laughs> <There's> so many <laughs> units. I, uh, I I had words and will have words with Stephen again. Um, then, oh, okay, never mind. Oops. Um, I'm just being told some things about how to host, so that's okay. Um, oh. Yes. <laughs> No, that's okay. So I was, I was thinking, well, because I can add myself to the cast, um, everyone can, but no, no, the right. host has to add everyone. Yeah, so that's, that's, right. that's good. It's good. Um, okay, cool. Um, yes. So yeah, they're deploying. Um, Kyle won the role and took the top edge. Um, I forget who won the role off to start placing tokens, but looking at the spread of tokens, it doesn't. I don't know. It seems it doesn't seem to be any real advantage. Any real Either particular side. thing. Now, one thing that will be interesting to remember that I'm sure we will go over many times is they've put the star for the center token. So, yep. for the purposes of winning the scenario, all tokens are worth one point. However, for the bonus points, the center one is worth two, and Thank bonus you. points matter an extreme amount um, at this very mm. end. You know, very squeaky end of the thing. Right. Anytime you have a huge tournament like this one, the, those little points just add up so much by the end of the tournament, right? I mean, it's going to yeah. be such a small separation at the top here. It's, it's You want to pick up as many points as possible every round. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I like their list here. I think, um, I think it's very interesting. I know Kyle is normally the goblin player, so it's interesting to kind of see that reversed. Um, one thing I think that's going in his favor is that he kind of knows, I think, everything that the Goblin list can do. So um, I'm curious to see if, if you know, there's going to be any tricks to this game, if he's going to try anything kind of crazy. I mean, Goblins are kind of, you know, all about that. But when your opponent knows your list inside and out, it's, it's a little harder to pull them off, I think. Yeah, and it's also interesting because um, Stephen... Stephen has picked up goblins relatively recently. He's been playing them in a couple of Australian tournaments mm. that have been running during, because uh, we've had a couple of tournaments run during Call to Arms, like mm -hmm. just on week long, week long rounds. He's right. doing and well he's with been, them too. He has, he has. Um, so yes, I based just on his Call to Arms at this point. I think Stephen's played. I think he's just played Salamanders. Um, mm -hmm. in Call to Arms, and though normally he plays Kingdoms of Men or League of Rodia or one of the... He has like a a cool samurai army in real life, and so he runs them as Kingdoms of Men or League of Rodia or Basilea or whatever. Okay. Um, those, those lists aren't too far removed from Goblins, I feel like, at least in, in style, right? Kings of Men sure. and Goblins are much smoother transition as if he was playing something like Varinger or, or something yeah. like that. Where, yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sure you can take some of that knowledge over with him. Lots of dudes, just Lots yeah, exactly. <laughs> lots of square bases and, you know, yeah. roll lots of dice, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, lots of dudes, but also not particularly fast, and so you got to get your positioning right. All right, so it looks like the players are joining us, so I will add the players in just about now. Uh, hello, Stephen and Kyle. Can you hear us? Hello. Yes, hello. How are we going? It does seem hello. my webcam has decided not to work, so that's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's okay. Look, to be honest, and uh, please don't take this um, as as particularly offensive, but I feel like all of us have a career suited for radio rather than video. Um, well, I hope the audience yeah, Stephen, very handsome. <laughs> yep. Slightly very sexier handsome. Alex Chavez. Just picture yeah. that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So thanks. Uh, thanks for joining us, guys. Um, so again, if we've got any viewers who are just joining us, um, deployment is done. We have uh, Kyle and his ogres with Night Stalker allies uh, deployed to the top of the screen. And we have Stephen and his goblins and more goblins and more goblins deployed mm. to the bottom of the screen. The scenario is Salt the Earth, which is uh, essentially pillage but with the ability to burn tokens at the end of your turn um, if, if you control them. Um, so I'm really interested to see how you do with this. Now I'm going to run through the lists. Let me share some, let me share some lists. Um, there we go. Let's share that and let's see how this looks. Okay, I'll zoom in a little bit. Okay, so this is uh, Stephen's list. So Stephen, did you want to run us through sort of from the top? Yeah, sure. Um, 
so this is the goblin list I've been using for a little while now. Uh, so I've got three hordes of rabble. They're just bodies that you have to chew through and uh, great for scoring. Uh, Horde of trolls with Chalice of Wrath to make sure they don't waver at an inconvenient time. I love uh, more beasts. I've got three regiments of more beasts. So two of them are the normal ones. And then I've got the mag ones, uh, which are essentially the same, just with an extra point of defense. Uh, two war trombones to hide behind the rebel hordes and punish anyone that actually kills a horde. Uh, three rock, uh, big rock throwers or lobbers, um, which they do what they say on the tin and they uh, and they kill stuff from range. Um, I, yeah, I, I normally take two, but I thought, yeah, I'll take three this time. Why not? Uh, one, pretty much, <laughs> yeah. They come in threes, and my my favourite unit in the game, the Goblin Blaster, on the next page. Um, these guys are fantastic for area denial, and yeah, they they often well they shouldn't live till the end of the game, but Love a um, good boom wagon. I find for sixty five points you can uh, you can do a lot of damage. Mm. Uh, Wing it is uh, great in combination with the lobbers, gives them elite, and he's also just really good by himself as well, getting in the way at annoying times. And his nerve for goblins isn't too bad, thirteen fifteen with uh, defense four. Uh, so then I've got two individuals, one bigot with a bow and a king also with a bow. Um, so these guys are just inspiring and they they ping a few shots occasionally and um, just generally get in the way. King on chariot is great for his speed. Put pipes of, pipes of terror on him just to um, so that he can contribute to those battles and maybe swing it my way. And that's the list. So nice. lots of drops. Yes, nice, nice, nice. All right, so let's um, switch over to... Uh, what have I got here? Ogres cosplay as Twilight Kin poorly. Uh, so take it away, Kyle. Well, normally uh, the previous list is what I would have walked you through um, because it's basically what I play. Um, I prefer, you know, Mobby's troops to regiments, but, you know, that's just because America and Australia were on different, you know, hemispheres. It's fine. Um, but yeah, so Ogres cosplay as Twilight Kin poorly. Uh, for the, like the 12 of you who watched it, I did a a video where I raised a calendar and I put every army in the game and a couple random stuff and I rolled dice to pick my army. Um, it came up ogres. And then um, a member in the chat, Thomas Struthers, got to pick the style of army I play. And he said, play ogres like second edition Twilight Ken. I want a shooty horde with a chariot and Night Stalker allies like third. So this is what I came up with that I think is pretty competitive. Right, or at least yeah. I did until I realized it was just playing the Australian me. Um, I got a little less excited when I was out dropped by like 40 or 50. Um, it's, it's what it feels like, I guess, to play against me. Um, but let me walk you through the list. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's also a jump. Uh, I usually play at 2300 here in the US. Um, I'll tell you, at 2300, this would just have four units of rabble, just four rabble regiments to, to lock up objectives. Um, but this isn't the 2300 version. So, uh, Red Goblin Scout sniffs uh, three troops of that. They're fast. They technically have melee function. Um, they technically shoot, and they technically get in the way, which is everything I want for 105 points of throwaway. Um, I don't even think I inspired half of them in deployment. Uh, Warrior Chariot Legion with Brewer Strength. There's nothing that makes me more happy to take against goblins than Crush Two Thunderous Two. Mm, that's um, what you but need. that. That uh, that leads yep, to really important. answers some questions you had. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, it pretty much takes care of how am I going to stop uh, that rabble horde, and it's uh, with crush two thunder two. Um, so he asked me to take a shooting horde, and I thought two shooters basically they matter, right? And then this is a mission where sitting in the back and scoring a token, not a bad idea. So, and you'll see in deployment, I was able to use it that way, but two shooter hordes supported by a warlock with inspiring talisman because he basically gets lightning bolt five and that'll act as a wasp control. Um, I took a hunter horde with the dragon shard shield because not only do they have ensnare and pathfinder and a bunch of other uh, BS rules that ogres didn't need on a speed seven melee platform, um, but being able to make them defense six on a turn and just sit at that token is just what goblins want to see. Um, <laughs> Moving on, I took a uh, Ogre Warlord on Chariot as my pseudo-dragon. Uh, he's kind of like a dragon, except not as good in any way. And then uh, Night Stalker Allies. I wanted to take something a little interesting. Um, to quote another Ogre player, Ogres have no ass. Well, a Scarecrow Legion uh, covers that. They're, 
they're like dash 200, I think. Uh, they're super slow, but it doesn't matter if you sit them on a token. You got to chew through dash 27 while you're having to deal with either ogres shooting you or et cetera, et cetera. You guys know how stuff works. And then I took a mm. fiend because I was going to take an individual, but that felt very un ogreish. So instead of a shade, I took a dread fiend because those guys don't suck, and it's another unit strength. And then I ran out of points. Nice. Nice. Well, yes. So we've got uh, 21 unit strength and 11 drops in one, and 26 unit strength and 19 drops in the other. Um, so yes, that is going to be interesting. We've got some active comments already. Um, so I might say goodbye to the players so we can uh, criticize you a lot um, <laughs> and just all talk about how we would do things better. Um, we right now when I pilot goblins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I will, let's see if I can stream the Universal Battle 2, allow. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so I will talk to you players later. All right. Thanks, guys. Have fun. Good luck. All right. All right, time to trash talk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, right. yes. I mean... Um, <laughs> so the thing to watch out for will be the first turn roll, but it's it is interesting in that... Um, I mean, I guess all of the rock lovers and stuff, they're pointing straight at those height four chariots. Um, mm. I can see, and they are presumably going to be the target. And basically, um, the only thing they can't see are the hunters and maybe the scarecrows because of the forest. Maybe, might be able to get one. Where's he right. put his... Oh, he's put his bastards all over the place, which I guess is... Yeah, those, those chariots will idea. not live very long, I would imagine. I mean, there's such a perfect target for for uh, those stone throwers, right? There's a... Uh... Mm. Yeah, those rock lovers to kind of take them out. So, yeah, yeah, I definitely th their time is is you know it's limited on the field for sure. Um, the ogre list, man, that list is interesting. I mean, it's got I, <laughs> big it's, dreams on it. You know, I don't, I don't know. Interesting is yeah, is nice. <laughs> exactly, it's exactly. It's it's. I see what he's trying to do with it, and and I love it, and I I think it's fantastic to try things out. Um, mm. you know, we talk about how Universal Battle offers the ability to kind of test whatever crazy idea you come up with in your head and, and you know here we go you know i don't know if he's having a nightmare when he came up with this or he claims there was some outside influence who knows i mean maybe it's just a way to justify what he wanted <laughs> but, it's, it's the answer know. to questions that i don't know are going to be asked this game let's put it that way yeah um, exactly was... exactly you know I, does he have the this the the power to push through his goblin list and kill it i mean i don't know what we'll to definitely find it, out it doesn't um, look good this, yeah, this I, I mean, I said, it doesn't look good. I, I have to agree. I mean, I like Steven's deployment a lot, by the way. I know you say he's new to goblins. I think deployment is actually one of the trickiest things you can actually do because it's, it's um, you know, so much of the game is decided in deployment. And, and for that, I think he's done a really good job of kind of centralizing his war machines, giving them targets mm -hmm. like you talked about, and then just making sure that he's just playing table to table edge, right? There's no flanks to give <laughs> anywhere. You know, he's got the whole board covered. So, I mean, you know, Kyle's going to look to punch through a gap here, but I don't. I think anything he can potentially punch through, there's going to something else to fill it up the hole. So um, we'll have to wait and see how that what happens here. I mean, I think um, the, the couple things that to look out for, I think specifically, are going to be the blasters. Can he minimize the damage they do to his army? Right. Um, you know, I see. I think I see two on the left there. Is that right? The two blasters, then one kind of Correct. in the middle. There's so. two, two, mm -hmm. two on the hard left, and then one right. sort of in the very mm -hmm. center of the board next to his war machines. Right, um, right. So and it looks like Kyle has one first oh. turn and is okay. moving first. It, it's a good start. It's a very good start. I think so. So yes, and he's deciding what to do. Yep. Um, so he's moving. Yep, yeah, he's moving his dread fiend around. Yep, very wise decision. Um, yeah. Put him right in front of that unit there, just making sure he stays out of charge range, obviously. I think, um, I think going first is a big deal, right? Especially because it's kind it's of late. It's a huge deal, and that's yep. one thing that I, I do think um, they perhaps need. Like, and I know it's a, for, for all I go, you go war games where you take, you know, you don't have alternating activations. But mm -hmm. you move all of your units. Um, the first turn thing is is huge, and I know a lot of war games that do it uh, go through a lot of work to try and mitigate, um, right. you know, mitigate the first turn advantage. Um, and that's probably one thing. Um, and one of the feedbacks I'll be getting is like for these next tournaments, can we start tracking who gets the first turn roll? 
um because i know it's huge for the way i play yeah i i agree i mean it is i couldn't huge. agree more i think it's like i i do hope they address it in some way um or track it in some way because um there, well, there's some say, scenarios right. where it kind of works to go second but that's only in certain matchups and scenarios so like when you comes and down it still to means that if you win the if you win the roll off to right. you get to choose right right, win the roll, right and then you say okay so if you're playing like uh, let's say control which is classically a scenario where you might want to go second mm -hmm. um then you you know it's just that that roll off so it might be a little bit better in the sense of if it was randomly determined who goes first rather than randomly determined who gets the choice mm -hmm. um, that might help things a little bit um right. but in what 10 10 out of 12 scenarios you kind of want to go first um unless you've got a very specific army type you know one of those armies that can do all of its shooting right from the get-go um uh, I find for me it's about fifty fifty. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. What What do you look for when you try to go second? What What like? Uh, what I'm a very situation? reactionary player, so I like to wait to see what my opponent does before I make the move and um, be able to capitalize on mistakes that I can see gotcha. are being made. So would you say it takes kind of a more defensive like counter style list to, to utilize the second turn then or do you, do you normally run enough shooting to kind of um do that because when you play aggressive list you typically want that advantage yeah. I mean, at least if i'm talking from a general like when i play aggressive list the main reason i want to go first is because i want to push you know whatever flank i'm going to overload or whatever you know whatever part of the board i, I see a weakness i want to push that weakness as fast as possible try and dictate the play right right you always kind of want to turn the corner or kind of you know Push, push it fast so that he doesn't have time to, to readjust, right? Maybe you deployed him somewhere, right? You don't want to give him two turns to maybe re move his units a bit. Um, mm. At least that, that's what I look for when I try to go first. Um, it's just kind of capitalizing on those small mistakes and, and kind of taking advantages where you where you can. Um, of course, good deployment can kind of mitigate that, but, you know, I, I'd be curious to, to see if they do um, kind of case, kind of, you know, they do address that issue in some way. Or some way. Now, Kyle, I think here is very smartly kind of... Um, you know, again, being aggressive and pushing the pace yeah, you don't here, want but to not sit, overly so, sit right? Down with this one, yeah. Otherwise, chariots are gone, and mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. Next. Yeah. So I mean, that's an interesting comment coming from the chat from uh, some rando, Matthew Selik. Is that how you pronounce his name? Selik. Um, <laughs> 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 The wrong so emphasis on the wrong syllable. Um, okay, so he says, what's the counter to the two shooter hordes? I see there's guys going to town in the first two, three turns. I, honestly, I think the counter is the rabble. They just tank the tank the shooter damage, right? Not um, sure if it's a counter. Sure, but there's it's not just... not a whole lot that he can do about it at the moment. No. Because um, the chariots have got to be your target for your yeah. ranged shooting. And the rabble um, are dead like chaff. It's 120 points or whatever it is. That, yeah, that's their so, job to soak up damage. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, if your rabble are taking damage, you're very happy to use the gun play, right? They're getting mm -hmm. charged instead of your your you know trombones and your blasters and all the other stuff and the stuff that you want to do damage um, for sure. Um, I, I do agree the shooter hordes. Um, if I were if I were trying to maximize their damage, I'd be trying to get into the maybe maybe some of the war machine stuff earlier. I mean, the thing I keep in mind is that they're high two. Which means they can kind of, or sorry, high yeah. three now. Excuse me. So uh, they can see over kind of all some of the stuff in the way here. Um, so um, they can kind of shoot. If he wants to start that that range battle and say, you know, I'm going to take out maybe one or two of your war machines, and then you're going to be down, and you're going to have to push the pace on me. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is definitely a viable strategy, especially the way that the scenarios are kind of laid out here. I see him, you know, cl clearly Kyle's got a game plan here where he's on a couple of these objectives right away. So. Uh, he's going to say, you know, if you want to come get these, you're going to have to uh, pay the price for it. So mm. I do like the way that Kyle's playing this game to start with. Yeah, because all of the tokens are pretty much on Kyle's half of the board. Right. And, and what's being interesting... The slower goblins, it'll be hard to kind of crack through. What's interesting, I've just noticed with his shooter unit, so the unit that I have highlighted with the rings... Um, he has positioned that so that in one move it can move out the double and will contest that center objective um, mm -hmm. with the angle. Mm -hmm. So that may be his, you know, turn six hail mary or whatever um, to try and to try and claim that. Um, 
For sure, that's no accident. I mean, maybe sure. all the all the scarecrows actually may be able to contest both. Um, um, eventually, right? If, get, if they're in the perfect <laughs> spot eventually. between them, yeah, exactly. It'll take them like five turns to get there, but sure, yeah, well, theoretically they can get there, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But um, but no, it is a good question about the shooting hordes. I mean, I, I, again, goblins don't really have a counter to things like that. I think um, the only thing you can do is really shoot them first, and then mm. you know just hope for the best, or. or you know, just, just kind of wait and see if I can shoot. Yeah, just take or it. I mean, it. shut them down with a, a quick character. Right, right. Yeah, if you want to, like, put the character out there. The problem with that is that those ogres still hit like ogres in combat, right? So their character, yeah. any any goblin character is probably still going to die if you throw them at the horde. But, but at least but just slow them down. But if you're throwing a bigot to do one damage to disorder them, mm -hmm. that's, what, 80 points or whatever. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, I, I, again, it's, it's sort of a different play style. Um, yeah. Right. I think, so I think, he's moved. He's oh. moved up, and he's onto the shooting phase now. All right. Um, let's see what he's got. So just for the players with the moves, he's moved up. Obviously, keeping his shooter stationary and moved everything up, sort of into the flanks. Um, he's targeting one of the more beast packs. Looks like. Um, yep. And oh, these are the sniffs. One, okay, two. so we'll expect <laughs> to hit some. Yeah, so a little pie shots, yeah, a right? A pip or two of damage. Yeah, um, yeah. Damage is damage, right? Burst. I mean. Okay. So there, yep. Yeah, five's normally steady aim. All right. Yep. Okay. Will it continue? Exactly, right? Let's see what he's got. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, this is shooting you do it just because you can. Um, very secondary to the, the nature of the game. I, I'm really curious to see what he does shoot with, with his ogre hordes here. Um, you know, I can see. I definitely see a strategy where he does go for the war machines and tries to win the, the game. Because mm -hmm. I, I mean, exactly. Who who can take six turns of shooting from the war machines, right? I don't know if he can. No, I think take that's it. So target right there. Right. Uh, so that'll be elite, and it'll it'll be gross. Exactly. And and so if you're not planning to take six turns of fire, you can't really go at him. This list doesn't have the tools to do that. So, I could see shooting them being a pretty viable option. I don't think they're inspired either. I don't think. Right. If I'm looking closely, I don't see anything near them. The war machines. Uh, yeah. I can't. Yeah. So those are like little details sometimes you look for when you're playing. Like, is there a king oh, inspiring one of them. The so king maybe. inspires one. Okay, so so I mean that's opportunity to me. When I see that, I think, hey, look, I can take a pot shot there. Those things, the nerve is what eight ten or something, really bad, right? So, hmm. um, you know, it only takes a handful of wounds to really put it in danger of, of potentially killing it. So. Um, I, uh, you know, the, the, they're the, the, nine eleven. So every single wound. Okay, sorry, I think is, I did. No, yeah. every single wound is yeah. a potential to at least waver. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, you, you can kill an eleven on it with zero wounds, right? I mean, if you roll high enough, right? On eleven, you mm. can do it. Um, so I mean, I really like the idea of the shots. Now, as I say that, I think he's shooting the rabble, maybe or no? What am I looking at? Yeah, here? Sorry. yeah, he's shooting at one of the rabble. Um, okay. Range oh. might have been an issue. What's the range on the shooters? It's thirty-two, right? Thirty-six. 36, yeah. Are you sure you should? No, it's, thir the it's only 30. Should be I it's going down. Right. Okay. Oh, it's 30. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so he doesn't have range. He oh, might not have range no. to the war machines. Okay, thank you, whoever uh, mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, was ah, here we go. Um, we've got someone joining us. Okay. Oh, Hello, Ooh. Ray. Uh, welcome to the cast. <laughs> What's up, Ray? Well, the Alex game... So it lasted a bit longer than what we uh, expected. Out of it. it was over four hours, so we had to oh eat gosh. supper, and Thomas needed his supper, and he had to dress up as his dinosaur because we thought Kyle would be playing with dinosaurs, but Kyle disappointed Thomas. <laughs> he did. He did. Yeah, he picked uh, ogres instead, which is you know, uh, kind of. I'm sure he could dinosaurs. proxy them for yeah, dinosaurs. Yeah, exactly. Models. Right. I've right. seen it done before. Yeah. Um. All right. So, yes, for those uh, just joining us, it looks like it is the next turn. So I should probably probably change that. So we're at the bottom of turn one. So now it is the beginning of uh, Stephen Devonish's turn. Uh, Kyle's first turn was pretty straightforward. It moved up, um, did a little bit of pot shooting. Eight wounds. Um, eight wounds off his two hordes of shooters, which is not, not bad. Um, not great. No, I guess. <laughs> Well, well, what's the expected output? Hang on, let me let me figure this out. So it's Here 18 attacks hitting on fives, isn't it? Yep, math hammer doesn't With work. With using two... I know... It, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> let me dream. Yeah, right. I mean... 50% um, of the time you get five damage, so it's a little bit low from two, two hordes. 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, and, and I get not wanting to take the cover shots on the uh, about the weapons in the back and weapons in the back, but I do feel it's a little bit of missed opportunity there to, to potentially um, take my, if he had the range on him, which I think is questionable. Mm. But yeah, um, maybe write that down, Alex, to ask them at the end. Yeah, um, yeah for sure. Because those, if you'd done even half of those wounds, if you'd done you know four wounds yeah, to a war machine, that, that, that's going to kill a war um, machine sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, gosh, in fact, I can almost... No, yeah. if that's 24 inches, 30, they're going to be out of range. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. All right, well, that makes the uh, question easy for us, yeah. yeah. Although then maybe do you consider moving up and shooting because they've got they've got the... What's the rule that they have now? It's pot shot. Oh, pot shot. Okay. Yeah, but then they're, they're doing um, nine attacks hitting on sixes. Right, right. Uh, for that yeah. one turn, so that's a big, that's a big swing just to for attempt. sure, for sure. And then you yeah, roll okay. a five or whatever, and it's for nothing. But at the moment, they're not going to even have the option to shoot those that that big threat of the no. the throwers. But right. I I probably would have risked the push, do the pot shot, maybe yeah. get one, maybe right? Get that right. overall. Yeah, because it you'd takes be able to unload for the next turn. Right, right. Because I think when it comes to war machines like that, it really takes a concentrated effort of, of all three of them to really do the consistent damage over time, right? Mm. Uh, if you take one or two out, it's like then you don't you don't have to really worry about it as much anymore. Where it's like, okay, you, you don't have to, you know, because with three, it's like you're you're almost expecting one to really hit hard every turn, you know. And this down, it, it completely changes that dynamic. Those war machines have got coverage of a lot of tokens, so they will be able to shoot at ogres. Oh yeah, the entire game. Um, so what's the move? Okay, so he's moved one Horde of Rabble up fairly aggressively, honestly. Like, he's moved it right up there. I mean... He's making him he uh, to... deal with it, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then presumably he'll just sit his shooting stuff behind and shoot over the top of it. Mm. Um, that's interesting if he can get his War Trombones up on the hill. Um, so the speed of the Chariot Legion, what are we looking at there? Speed 8? Yeah. How far can... Uh, that can get uh, some charges in, so 12, because... 13, 14, 16. He can only go forward basically an inch and a little bit um, on his okay. left flank yeah. before he gets charged by the chariots who are not on the hill for the purposes of Thunderous mm. Charge. <laughs> and the chariots can only see... What's that, the... More beasts at the king. So right now the horde, he's moved the horde far enough forward so that it doesn't present a flank. Okay, right. To the to the thing, and he's positioned his war trombone so they're out of charge of the chariots. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. I suspect one of the things here is that Stephen does not want his blasters to get tied up with the sniffs. Um, <laughs> no. Because he wants his blasters to kill things like the chariots. Um, yeah, in that's... one of those extremely infuriating trades, where For you, sure. you know someone sacrifices an eighty-point unit to take out your what three hundred and fifty-point unit. Um, yeah, yeah, and Stephen yeah. hasn't done a lot to protect his uh, blasters necessarily, right? I don't think um, you know they're just kind of out there, right? Them so... well enough. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Five fearless he's going to chuck some grenades, I suspect. Light shooting. But we'll see. <laughs> yeah, he's helped up to kill them for sure. Um, Ray, welcome to the cast. I like your shirt. Um, you said that other one lasted for uh, for four hours, is that right? Uh, yeah, it was just over, just under four hours, then over four hours with the post match commentary. So you came uh, back so for really, more, too, huh? Really celebrating the last event wow. without clocks. I think <laughs> it's a, uh, a festival. I think Alex wants to enjoy every minute of it. <laughs> so, Very nice. Uh, he's making a solid play with 25 points for uh, second place. So. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of points to get. He, he, you said he got all 25? All 25. Wow. Mm. So the final score is 25 6. Impressive, no doubt. Um, I think this game will be. I can see this game being a little closer. I think just just based on the scenario and uh, some of the killing power we have here. 
Um, I'll say Steven's playing a lot more aggressive than I would have expected um, so far. I don't know if he's got some kind of master plan here with, with some of his units, but... Um, he might be just looking to run up and then just not counter charge anything and just shoot it so that he's he's sort of where he's blocked up the ogres is as far forward as possible. So because then he can do the thing where you attack me, but I don't counter charge and then I just shoot over the heads of the mm -hmm. goblins um, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so he may just want that engagement to happen as far upfield as possible, which I think is the right move just because if he was holding back, I don't think he would have enough uh, turns to be able to move everything forward to start claiming those objectives once he's finished shooting them. Mm -hmm. I'm really surprised, to be honest, um, at the token placement. It's not even whatsoever. So if you're Kyle, you could begin uh, burning, salt salting the earth and destroying the tokens closest, uh, uh, closest to Steven. Mm. and uh, work back from there. Right. Yeah, it's... it's, could. it's, it's yeah. I wonder, I assume, assuming Kyle, a little before I came in, but assuming Kyle won the roll to pick the side, right? That side is, is... Okay. Yeah, that side is definitely favored. Um, and, and it, you know, sometimes it's a strategy some people do. is like they'll kind of put a lot of things on one side and say, you know, okay, well, if I win the roll for side, then, then I'm in a great spot, right? And... and you know, maybe that. That's, and if I that's... don't, I'm coming to get you. Right, right. If not, I'm just going to push anything for anyways, and and kind of see what happens. But you know, it does it does create an interesting dynamic here. And I, I guess you're right Putting... that he has no choice yeah. to push forward here with goblins. Putting all of your toys on one side of the table works if you've got an elite army that doesn't have anything that can just sit and squat on objectives. Mm. Um, yeah. Because then you're like, either I start with it all and you have to come to me, or you have it all and I have to come with you. Either way, my army stays all together. Um, which is the only way it works. Um, but I feel like a better way to get around to that is just like, so chucking it. So who did win table sides in this one? Kyle won table side, and Kyle also run choice of turn. For first turn as well, so looking quite well for him. I, I think I do agree with you guys, like we said, when you have the faster army, I think I think it makes sense to kind of do that deployment with the, like I said, the, the kind of the heavily weighted one side deployment, because if you're the faster army, um, you know, like if you don't win the side that you want, you're gonna fight and you're gonna push forward anyways. You know, you're gonna fight mm -hmm. in his pace. You know, versus okay, well, if I, I won the roll, now I can kind of sit back and use my speed to, to zone him and kind of play control. So, um, you know, I can say if Kyle chose to intentionally do that and then put these tokens there with the, with the you know that kind of plan in mind, then you know, definitely hats off to him for for doing a good job so far. Write write down that on your list of questions. <laughs> exactly. Right. Uh, it was an accident. Right. He, he, trail claim is a tactical genius, right? He planned this move, you know, yeah. before yeah. he even came to the table. So looking at this movement here, we've got the Ogre Chariots can charge one regiment of more beasts at the front. They cannot charge the trolls at the back. It doesn't look like 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. No, just out. Um... So I'm guessing that Stephen is hoping that those chariots, yeah, those chariots at best will kill one unit of goblins. Um, they're more beasts, um, because he's. I'm assuming that he's hoping that all of his shooting will just do stuff, and then the trolls might go in to finish it off. Yep, and we're on to think uh, right in the goes, shooting phase. We're on the shooting. Yep. Um, so some grenades getting chucked at some sniffs. <laughs> Oh, oh, you be dice. Hang on, I've got to think for so that. This is the king. Yep. Yeah. Now he did roll. All miss. He did roll die six there. So. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that's uh, quite a roll there. Nothing even above a four. That's about my experience with goblin um, <laughs> character shooting. Yeah, no, he I rolled like... goblin character combat as well. <laughs> right, going right. to do one damage on, with seven dice? No. Exactly. That's that's the worst. That's why I stop relying on those kind of like, you know, three attack heroes. Like, they're never going to get it. It's just when you need it. Mm. Um, I, I like having more dice, the better. Um, <laughs> no, and still just... not damaging. Yeah, as I say <laughs> that. He's... Times, no damage. Well, yeah. What's the defense oh, wait. on Sniffs? Goblin Sniffs a defense three. Sniffs? No, you got three. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so he got some damage in there. Do we remind them if they figure? <laughs> uh, 
I think these are professional. I don't remember, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Um, maybe, maybe write that down as the. Um, <laughs> <laughs> why did those wounds, those the sniffs? Oh, here we go. Okay, yeah, so he's manually. Right. Okay. I never had a doubt. I trusted them. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, I just would have thought that, that you know, because a lot of stuff's defensive for, so you just like. Because when you're missing a lot of bad rolls, you can get into your head and you can be like, oh, I'm not getting anything. Oh, this sucks. Mm. Right, um, right. No, I hear you. I hear you. It, it, takes, it takes sort of a cool collector head to, you know, analyze the dice and, and kind of expect it. Um, now, he rolled 1d6 there. What was that exactly? I think he was thinking he was hitting on fives. Forgetting that uh, the sniffs are on a hill. Was that the grenade? So I would think there'd be no cover. Maybe. Oh, maybe. Uh, uh, no steady from... aim. Right, there you go. Oh, but he's individual, so he gets steady aim. Nope. Should be hitting on fours. Is it elite, maybe? Or are they nope. elite? No. Nope. Cover? Oh, this is just a bigot. Yeah, all right. All right, well, and now he's on the war machine. I, I can't follow this along now, so these are the roles that matter, right? The, now, what's he going right, to target? So he's with the elite The chariots, out. right? Yeah, yeah. Here we go. One. Okay. Okay. One, One hit. Move. Oh, and a reroll. So are they vicious as well? Uh, the big rot throwers are not. Okay. So I think one wound so far. Two wounds. Oh, is it two? Yeah, and there's been three, three that have hit now. Okay, yep. So... Four wounds total. Four mm -hmm. wounds so far. Uh... That wasn't a lot of wounds for three hits. No. Oh, I'm, I'm, if you're Kyle, you're very happy right now. Okay. Might be able to waver them, but <laughs> that's as good as you can do. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You get, you'd be very happy to waver them or lucky to waver them at this point. So um, one turn down, you know, you kind of breathe a sigh of relief when you when that happens, and it's kind of <laughs> kind of just wait for the next turn, right? Brace for impact. Five, so it was five in total. Check oh. out these nerve rolls. What's he rolled an 11 twice for nerve? Oh, no. Mm. 11 twice. So the first one was on the chariots, which still didn't matter. Like, you needed box cars to wave the chariot. Okay. But then the second one was on the sniffs, um, which, yeah. That is going to do something, yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, top two. All right. Yeah, I thought for a second the chariots were going to wavered, which was um, definitely be bad news for Carl there, but... Um, no, this, this looks like it could be... Uh, they might survive to charge. Yeah, exactly. They, they should see some combat, I would imagine. I mean, and here's the question you always ask yourself, right? Like, oh, okay. I mean, to survive when it shouldn't have survived, or, or like, you weren't expecting it to survive. What do I do with it now, right? Like, do you just slam mm -hmm. them into the units? I mean, probably, right? I think, I think, you know, might as well. They're, they're kind of on borrowed time. Might as well throw them out there. Yeah. Better to do some damage than nothing. Right, right. right. So, Ray, what do you do if you're, if you're Kyle? So, it's the top of your turn. Um, what are you What are you thinking? To begin with, I watched Kyle's uh, list building video that he did today, and it, it it is not a list that I would have ever run. Uh, <laughs> yeah, correct, mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. Ever can for all of us when you say that. So, in the previous game, I was like, okay, you know, here's what the person can do because it's a list that at least. I understood and made sense. Kyle's list, um, hats off to him. Thomas is disappointed, but you know what? I, I'm impressed by the fact that he took this challenge. Yeah, definitely. I, I don't act, he has what, one hammer? He has the two shooters in the back, the hunters who can be a hammer, but he, he doesn't really have a lot of hammers. Or not that I'm seeing. I think against goblins, hunters can definitely count as a hammer. So, so that gives him what, like mm. the chariots, the hunters, and the two shooters. And shooters can do damage. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's, and it's he's not got bad. His void lurker, void lurker, which can clean stuff up as well. It's I love bad. that. It's not great. I love that we're not talking about the fact the hunters have the dragon shard shield either. Like that's <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> like what? <laughs> what was that well, about? It's a handy answer to certain certain units, right? Um, so you Is can use the terrain and then you give yourself defense, what, five or six, does it? Six. So yeah, defense yeah. goes up six, to six. Like, what are you going to do when you, like, I mean... Well, what it does is it's like the plague pots for the rats. It is an item that you pop and then for one turn, people right. aren't going to charge you. 
But, and so, but it's goblins, so who cares? But, but, but like, I'm looking at that goblin horde going, well, you could charge the hunters, but you'd be ensnared, sure. and you'd be hindered, so you'd be half dice on sixes. Yeah, like, well, he didn't know he was going to be playing goblins, is the thing. I think he suspected he might have been going up against salamanders. Um, true. And then, all of a sudden, defense six hindered and ensnared up against salamanders becomes a lot more interesting. Um, whereas... Against goblins, yeah, it's just right. I mean, my main enough. gripe with Dragon Sword Shield, especially, is that you can't even counter charge when you do it. So you kind of have to like sit there, literally, and and just it's kinda... useful. It's useful for surge armies. Mm. Sure, for absolutely, price, price, absolutely, undead. It's very useful for them and no right. one else. Yeah, that, that's the only one you can find some mild use with it. But I, I think if I was Kyle, I would be burning that token in the woods. Um, I am a huge fan of burning to uh, tokens early, and I don't think it will necessarily win on the right flank. You might, so get rid of it. I don't think anything's out unit strengthening those scarecrows, though, right? Right. Right. He's thinking. He's thinking he's going to win that one. I, I agree with you. I yeah. think. I think he, the scarecrows his... have got that. Goblins are going to take freaking forever, especially if scarecrows are in the forest. Um, they're going to take forever. And so I think he's got his shooters that are picking up that one that's in the the swamp at the back and then the one at the very back of the board. Like he's tagged those already. The scarecrows have got that one sort of there in the forest. Maybe he leaves some sniffs on the hill to sit on that one um, and makes make Stephen come to him and then he burns them because he's going to see Stephen coming. Mm. Um, then he burns them before, I don't know. So correct me if I'm wrong, the burning happens at the end of your turn, right? Not at the end of your turn, not at the end of your move. Yeah. Right. So you can do some interesting things where like the chariots, for example, could charge that uh Mobby's pack in the woods there on the left. Potentially try to kill them and, and try to burn that token right away or something like that, where if you kill them and overall kinda land there, like you you're th you're throwing away your unit, right? At the point you're sacrificing a unit, but if you can get the payoff and you can, you know, kinda get the burn with that, then you don't really care anymore about that flank. So you know, uh, there's. I think there's interesting options like that that are presented. I wonder if he goes for something, you know, similar. And I think Kyle's up. Like he's up five objectives to three. To, well, realistically, one, uh, right. possibly three. So uh, I wouldn't be overly aggressive if I was Kyle, which may not be his play style because you're sure. winning. You've won the side. You've won the first turn. Like. Yeah. 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 I agree. The, the, shooting, good... the shooting will be the thing. Of um, because I can't. I, I don't think his chariots last beyond turn three. Um, mm. Right. You know, because even if he does five wounds a turn, you know, end of turn three, that's fifteen, and then that's a standard nerve roll. Um, to you know, at least waver them. Um, yep. And then do we wager a beer on this? Like, do we do we put the over under on turn three? Like, no, I'm down. Um, uh, look, honestly, with filth, with war machine filth, I think you're going next turn. I think you'll just get a spike roll with elite and then it'll just be um i think perhaps that steven is working out some of the traumas that he uh picked up playing tom annis um yeah i think we're very much seeing like you know the hero's journey you know your typical plot arc of a guy who starts out as like a really nice guy and then you know he gets he goes through some sort of horrible traumatic experience and then he comes out of it the other side um, but will there be a redemption arc for steven we don't know uh, tune in we'll to, to season two of Cold Arms. Right. I'll, I'll put my uh, beer on uh, turn four. On turn four, uh, okay. I'll take that. I'll. I'll I think turn three. <laughs> so okay. I will. Um, put me in the turn gosh, three what's camp a, as What's well. a good Canadian beer? I must admit, I do not know any Canadian beers at all. I, yeah, we're just drinking there. Yeah. Actually, Elizabeth brought me down a Spitfire Amber Ale from uh, Kent in the UK. Kent to Shale. Okay. So I had that, and then I have an Italian red wine, which I had with dinner, because clearly I have to mix alcohols at this point. Right, right. Very nice. So Selick asks the shooters, they've got a few options to shoot now, do they keep shooting and trying to take off that rebel horde that are damaged, or do they go for a different target that's starting to advance a bit more? Uh, my opinion, you're stuck. Once you can shoot that first round into that rebel, you're stuck shooting them. Otherwise... Okay. Otherwise, totally you're wasting otherwise it's a waste of time. Yeah, time. otherwise yeah. exactly. You, you kind of you can't you get us to stay the course now, right? You can't just yeah. stay away. And I mean, basically the horde will die eventually. That horde. 
if he shoots off that horde, then yeah. Stephen's in some trouble because yeah. then all of a sudden he's he's really struggling to contest that center token. Mm. For sure. Um, yeah, there's a lot of value in killing the unit strength. I mean, I will say for for you know you, you know it's one of those things. And goblin armies, yeah, they have a million drops, but a lot of times they don't necessarily have a lot of unit strength. Um, it drops, right? So. You know, you look at three drops here that are designed to kill themselves, so those are kind of useless, right? You have three drops here that are war machines that don't do anything, and then you have, you know, some individuals in there. So, you know, it's really not, you know, you kill the hordes, and, and then you guys, your army's unit strength starts dropping very quickly. So, you know, I think I think it's fine to keep shooting the rabble and kill them, and, and you know, and then just kind of put the ball in Goblin's Court to, to really do something. We have a question about what type of red, Ray. Um, the fans demand answers. <laughs> uh, it, it's an Italian red, and it's a, a mixed blend. Um, I can go get the bottle, but that would take me away from the action. And, and I do like the idea of shooting out the middle horde, because if you do that, then the scarecrows and the hunters can take out the other horde, and you've solidified the uh, objectives on the, on the right. Do you think it's worth trying one of the units to shoot at the blaster to remove any sort of damage potential um because that blaster is there i think the hunters would be my target for the blaster yeah for sure um quite obviously and um all also watch out for the uh more beasts that are on the far right um mm. potentially being able to depending what he does with his void lurker um yeah potentially being able to get the outside contain there and then come I... in and backdoor a bunch of people mm-hmm I think he's happy to keep that that in the void with the dread fiend, right? He's, I think he's happy to just kind of sit there and, and hold the, that unit back, and, and you know, he, if that takes five turns, I think Kyle's very happy with that. Um, you know, that he wants that unit nice and safe in the middle. So I think that, that dread fiend's doing his job. I, I I'm afraid of the blaster. I, I it, it's tough, man. Like I, said, I think I think you got to stay the course here, and I think as I'm saying that, we see some charges being declared here. So um, looks like the sniffs are going to go in on the blaster on the left. Is that right? Uh, looks like it's the king. Oh, on the king. Okay. The king. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So blaster, of course, is, was further back, so he couldn't get hit, uh, as you would expect. Um. So, so sniff's just kind of getting in the way, right? And whoa, where's the chariots going? It's okay, so they're charging. Yeah. Okay. This is Why interesting. Think he did this one. That was all that the he had. That was the only charge that was uh, open to him. I guess unhindered, right? Assuming. No, he couldn't. He didn't have the range to charge anything else. Everything oh, else okay. Was okay. So the unit was out of range in the back? Okay. Yeah, th there's a, that, that unit of more beast was the only charge that the chariot so the charge had. Charge or be charged. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll play the rest even then, keeping the range and, and uh, playing it smart. Um, now, having said that, um, again, where are those chariots going to end up, right? Like, where could they possibly end up this turn that, you know, you're happy with, right? Maybe the rabble, maybe they won't get flanked by rabble, I guess. I wouldn't. I would Maybe. just still be shooting at the chariots. I wouldn't be charging. I, I, is that a blaster right in front of the chariots? It is. It is. It certainly is. Yeah. And, and are the rabble on a hill so that they get thunderous one? That's They're a good not question. on the hill. They're not fifty percent on the hill. Yeah, that, I agree. That it looks just under. Which then is, yeah. I, I, I'm going to go out there and say I think that was the first mistake by Stephen. I think I would have kept the rabble fifty percent on the hill so that they can get thunder. Like, Thunderous One means a lot to the goblins. It means if, nothing if that were 50% on the hill, his chariots would have had a flank on them. The go the ogre chariots would have been up. So he, he he had to move his rabble forward precisely like that to keep them out of arc of the ogre chariots. Otherwise, if they had been back even just an inch, the ogre chariots could have hit them in the flank. But if they were back two inches, they would have been in line with the mob east, right? Yeah, there's, there's yeah, probably an angle there to play. He could, have defended, the, he could um, have defended the flanks that way. One thing not to forget, I know he's forgot to move it, but the chariots do have five wounds on them, so they're not exactly sitting at full health or anything like that. So, um, you know, Even goblins in combat can, can can put a good hurt on them there. I mean, their nerve is good, but it's not that good. So, um, you know, if he can get riskily even eight to eight to ten wounds on him with a combination of charges, he can probably so finish him off. This is really interesting with the dread fiend. How he's not actually charging the more beasts, but he's what wanting the more beasts to charge him and be hindered. That seems. Yeah, I mean. Um... That seems odd. Did he pick up? Is that the sixth token that he has, or? 
So Stephen has one token down the bottom in the forest. Yeah. Um, and then there's one in the dead center. And then there's four on the top half of the board, pretty much. But um, one wasn't there the one on the dread pin? No. I don't think so, right? Um, no. no. Oh, okay, that's just the way it... There, there is something on that, like, there's some red text or something there. I don't I don't know exactly what's on there. I, I thought there were oh, seven tokens. There's the heights. So the, the red text that's ah. around the thing is the height. So that's the leading, you know, that's a height zero, difficult terrain, whereas that's height 10. Okay. Uh, height seven. So, yeah. Gotcha. So, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, the dread thing, I mean, it makes sense. The mob beast pack, I mean, hindered without, um, right, you lose your, what do you do? I mean, you're going to hit on fours, crushing one. It definitely takes a little bit out of their, their attack, I mean. Uh, personally, I would have just charged them. Um, if that was your intent to hang around on that flank, to start putting wounds on them. Um, yeah, because their nerve is not that good either, right? You, you, no. Like if you're if you're hitting them first, yeah, you can do some damage. You hit them I, first, they're going down in two turns. Um, did he? Yeah, okay. I, don't, I don't understand that. He had range on them too. He just didn't yeah. do it. Speed hmm. eight. He must have had range on them. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I, I yeah. can't disagree. Yeah, with that, yeah. Put it on the list. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, I mean, this is we get to make fun of him now, right? So, yeah. What yeah. an idiot! Didn't charge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What a maroon. Exactly. Um, no, of course, Kyle. I'm sure he's got some kind of devious plan here oh, yeah, that's yeah. going to pay off in, in three turns here. Make him look like a genius. Um, but I think we're shooting right now, right? As we're talking here. Yeah, and he just rolls all 36 at once. He says, I love it, man. Yeah. Ten <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that is that is definitely a big deal. That, that Rabble Horde is, is, is there five restaurant or was it more than that? Is it eight? Um, five per per thing. So ten is the ten is the Ten additional what you'd wounds from both hordes. Right, right. Yeah. So, so yeah, they're very close to dead. I mean, they should, yeah. should dive. Yeah. 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 If that's a nerve. Then... Yep. Um, that's I think a seven and a nine, so they're yeah, dead for good. sure. Yep. And then all of a sudden, Stephen's uh, the ability. Oh, well, we'll see. He does have a lot of nimble little one unit strength dudes that can mm -hmm. um, can get on stuff right at the end. Yeah, I mean, um, he's got he's got to make the tough decisions now. Of what do you charge? What do you shoot? Right. That, that's that's the tough goblin decision, right? Well, his trombones mm -hmm. are gonna have. He's gonna want his trombones to say shoot the chariots, right? Um, I think so. I'm not sure. I mean, but what else? Because otherwise, his trombones, I guess, could shoot the sniffs. But the sniffs, he might as well just let the trolls counter charge the sniffs. Could they shoot um, the uh, ogre chariot, the warlord on chariot? Potentially. So far. they're they're range twelve, right? So he could potentially do some movement and run them over. Like you'd have to shuffle a bunch of stuff around. So potentially yeah. he could. But I think you just want to shoot at the chariots with everything until it's dead, um, because. That, well, what's your you know, what's your blaster doing then? If you do that, you know, you get that blast, the beautiful blaster right grenades, in the middle. Chucking grenades. Just throwing grenades. Yeah, all right, I, maybe. I yeah. move it War machines. So all these big so rock robbers, his war trombones, his grenades, just throw everything until that's dead. Because once that's dead, that really changes the whole arithmetic. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I do see a world where that guy maybe lives till turn six and then kind of runs out in the middle and blows something up and wins an objective or something. Well, Who he's knows? Still unit strength, right? And so then all of a sudden yeah. you're thinking yeah, maybe he's fair. more valuable as unit strength one rather than um, than dying. Yeah, in my um, round five game, I had a Goblin Blaster fail to do a single hit in two rounds of combat and then added unit strength to the objective. <laughs> no, nice. That's awesome. That's it. That's, yeah, I mean, it, it, I agree. 65 points for one unit strength is not a bad trade, so not a bad deal, so... Um, maybe it's also right disappointing when you fantastic. go in expecting to die and then don't. <laughs> right, yeah. right, exactly. I, but part of me just wants to roll fifty dice. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I exactly, I, I agree with you. I mean, I, blasters to me, like, if they didn't die, then you did something wrong, right? Or I feel like I did mm. something wrong. But uh, no, I, I hear you guys' points there. It's the, all the very game, valid. If, the, if your blasters didn't die, your game either went really badly or really well. Right, um, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, and we'll see what happens here. I think I, I do agree with you that shooting the okay, chariots so, does seem yeah, the obvious choice. Combat, the chariots oh. seem to have taken off the most, Oh yeah, That's, you would expect that. Not 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 super surprising, hey. Um, no. Okay, and then a then a pivot there. So now it's just time. Okay, for well, I don't want a frontal charge on the chariots. It's only twenty five attacks. But if you gave me a flank, I would take the flank. 
Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a bit questionable whether he'd be able to pivot enough to, to stop the flanks. It looks like he did, I think. Um, I imagine he did. He's, um, looks like he's clear there. So, so now so, what yeah. I would be doing is moving that blaster up so it's one inch away to try and use it as chaff and then keep uh, everything shooting at him. Yeah, I'd, I'd put something in front. Some, You know, you just start feeding things one time. I'd probably even look at the war trombone, parking a war trombone right in front of it and feeding him that. I think the blaster with the unit strength... Right. Um, has a little bit more utility than one more trombone. Um, I don't think the yes. trombone will have the movement speed five can't at the double. Yeah, sure. So the it, yeah, it won't. It'll barely get to halfway of that uh, bigot where that bigot is. Yeah, which sure, still allows sure. that chariot to do whatever it wants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you do us a favor? Could you show which is the king and which is the uh, bigot? So the um, king is on the, the chariot on the far left. So the bigots, the bigots there, and okay. then the king is this so the one. king on foot. Yeah, so the king on chariot and king on foot, or on, on fleet back, I should say, sorry. Okay, yeah. so just making sure. So it looks sure. like okay. the kings have darker wolves. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's, the, that's the king. That's the king, got with it. With the bow, and the bigot. That's the bigot, okay. Yeah, okay. Got it. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, so okay. So I just want to see what he does with those guys. Um. What would yeah. you be doing with those guys? Um, at this point in the game, they'd be honestly they'd probably be beeline for the shooters. I think. Um, I think. Um, earlier I said, yeah, that's not really gonna work. But now it's like you know your opponent's kind of forced your hand. There's yeah. nothing else for them to really do in the middle. I think they can't. They have no so, power in the objective game, right? You might as well throw them towards something. Just to sum up, sum up uh, Kyle's turn two. So uh, Kyle's turn two, he moved up. Um, a little bit more on the left flank he started to do some charges um, still continued to shoot and do some real damage with his shooting um, otherwise on the right hand side he moved up quite conservatively I think um, and yeah so now we're looking at what Stephen Devonish is going to do in response um, and yeah the, um, the, oh, the, the power of the ogre shooting I think has taken a lot of us a bit by surprise um but that's okay. Okay, all right. So more base in the flank of those sniffs. Okay. Okay. Controversial. Okay. Uh, how far away is the scarecrows from the goblin? Uh, it's to get them out of the way. Okay. Sure. See, that's a that's a, so that uncovered charge. That's very interesting. So the the charge the flank charge into the sniffs from the more beasts was more about clearing up lanes for these goblin. Kind of see if he could go into the chariot. Looks like he can't, or can he? No. Not yet. Yeah, I don't think he has the angle for that. Um, Ray, no. what are you asking about? Something about the scarecrows? Uh, scarecrows to the... to the goblin horde. So What's can the goblin thing? charge them, essentially? No, actually, I would probably back up the goblins if they get them out of range. Oh, they're well within range, yeah, I think. Um, but if they back up two and a half inches, they'd be out. Cause I, I well, think can the they goblins... see, though? Because they're technically behind the trees, right? But the scarecrows are in it. But they're not with the leader, the leader point, point, right? Yeah, but I think the, yeah, the scarecrows can stay. So from later point down, later point down. So maybe there's a pivot he can make or something to get him out of range. Or, or I, I, into the forest. I, I just think backing up two and a half inches would put them out of range. Um, and that way, if the hunters want to charge you, it's one on one. Right. Uh, if Would the scarecrows not... and hunters do it, I might be dead. Right. Yeah, so I'll he's think... trying to move his wing it around, and it depends on how strict they want to get at the one inch away. Need to remember that the scarecrows have wild charge D three as well. Oh, oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a good point. It's a good point. Uh, it's, you you don't see that come rules. up usually, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well played, Ben. Well played. <laughs> uh, you remember that? It's beyond me. Yeah, I'm gonna write that down on my list. Exactly. If that, if that D three ends up being like the game making charge, like I'm, I'm dying here. Like, it'd be amazing. Yeah, I played against Night Stalkers recently and thought, all right, I'll just sit 11 inches away. That should be okay. And then he rolled a three for his wild charge. <laughs> it's, oh, always the, it's always the classic yeah. thing of, oh, is this, yeah. um, is this unit, you know, is this unit uh, 12 inches away? Yes, it is more than 12 inches away. Hang on, hang on. Is this unit out of charge range? Well, <laughs> mm. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's a, it's a trickier question. All right, looks like... Uh... Trolls do get the counter charge on the 
Kronos are counter sniffs, there. sniffs. Yep. Um, they should easy pick up. He's got his wing it there. So I think, okay, so maybe he's looking to run his wing it up to grab that objective on the hill and do its um, eye in the sky rubbish. Right. Uh, I mean, the wing it's do a lot of damage. Can still see, the wing it's can yep. still see the chariots. So the wing it can still tag the chariots with eye in the sky. Um, ugh. Yeah, I mean, the wing is damaged not to be undervalued. I mean, they, they hit pretty hard, you know. Um, I yeah. think really one of the standout units of the goblin list, the wing it's there. So what's really powerful. interesting is that Kyle didn't burn the token on the hill. If he knew he was going to abandon the hill with everything, um, why didn't he burn the token? Because he... Because I thought he might have been planning to leave some sniffs behind the hill or something where they'd be safe from pretty much everything and then last turn just run up and... Be on the hill. Yeah, because you'd have to think something's got to be surviving long enough to be able to capture it at the end. But if he's throwing yeah. everything forward, but if yeah, and so if his plan was to use the sniffs as that, he should have burned that token. So that's mm. a um, because yeah. that 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 really helps because if Stephen can get the uh, wing it or something, I mean something's going to get there, right? If if it's yeah. not the wing it, it might be the king of the chariot or, or something, Even right? So faster or something. He's yeah, exactly. At this course. point, I agree. I don't see how it helps him though. I, I do agree with you. There's that one, and I think maybe he just didn't plan, think far enough ahead, wasn't sure how he was going to commit. Um, I mean, sometimes it's hard to tell too, right? I mean, um, you know, who's to say that if if that token does get burned, that um, Stephen doesn't sit more back and kind of wait and shoot him more? So. You know, sometimes you see opportunity, you push forward, and and you know, I, I say it's it's working so far to the degree that the chariots, you know, they're gonna absorb a lot of fire here, so mm. gonna keep the rest of his army safe, and and you know, he's gonna have to really look to push the pace in the middle, I think, and, and kind of hope to get the damage there. So it's interesting that he hasn't charged the chariot. So he's looking at. He's charging with the blast, huh? Okay, so yep. he's going okay. all in with the melee. Okay, so okay. That's interesting, very interesting. Well, What's then the he can token? shoot the bane chance. Uh, okay, so he's bane chance his rabble. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a fine option. I mean, I think if you if you get you look for a waiver here, right? If you can get a waiver here, you're very happy. Um, and this frees up your shooting to. Maybe his rock lovers will just go after the shooters. Yeah, you can go the shooters or maybe the There's king on the chariot there. It looks like a tight angle. Maybe you can get him as well. I don't think you can see the king on the chariot over the trolls. Sure, sure. It's it's a tight angle yeah, for sure. Um, Is that playing chariot token representing the thunderous charge from the hill? Um, because he's got well, Oh, did they rule him on the hill? Have, he shouldn't have that. So let's have a look and see. i see if he's got any bane chant in the... He's got no wizard. He's got no loot. No, so yeah, maybe they decided it was. I mean, it was not. It was close, but it did look like it was yeah, off. Yeah. I, I think, um, you know, it's one of those things that, like, when it comes down to it, you gotta like, you know, calculate mm -hmm. an integral to figure out the curve area, right? I mean, no one's doing that in game, obviously. Like, we're just trying to like estimate it. I usually, if it's close, sometimes you just tell it you're uh, punished. Presumably, or have it, he right? asked. Presumably, right, asked, right. I was yeah. okay with it. Yeah, if you eyeball it, you're not sure. I usually say you just have it, right? It's 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 fine, right? Um, Especially if you discussed it the turn before, like they might. Yeah, have... yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. presumably, if if Kyle was okay with that, then that's fine. But okay. what right. are the uh, blasters doing now? So we've got one blaster has gone into the horde of chariots. The other blaster it appears to be still sort of jammed up back here. Um, He'll be shooting at the single chariot. Shooting at the chariot, along with the winget, I'd imagine, and along with the bigot and with his bow. The trombone. Uh, yep, definitely the, trombone as well, yeah. Yeah. Um, then this blaster over here hasn't been moved yet, but I suspect there will be some... Uh, I mean, I'd be looking at the hunters. Um, I'd yeah. be looking at charging the rabble into the scarecrows. And then the... Um, the blasters into the hunters maybe we'll see right i think i think the hunters are a perfect target for the 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 uh, blaster i mean it's gonna you know they're, they're not very tough they did you know they, can, they can't really take a punch like that so the dragon shard shield token has he popped the dragon shard shield this turn i don't think so because he, he moved he them last turn pop. sure sure that's yeah true. i think that's just a mark to say that's what they have that he's right yeah. again if he can carrying it sorry no go ahead how many catapults can see the hunters? Because to me, that would be the the. If I can't shoot the chariots, I want to shoot the hunters. One, two, two, two. Can they? Yep. So just like oh, okay. they can see the absolute 
uh, you know, in arc, um, they can just see. They've got the very, uh, like, half an inch. Right. It's a fair the point. Top corner. Uh, but the third one, not. Because if you can put five wounds on them, all of a sudden, they're no longer scary. Yeah, I agree. I think... Um... I, I didn't think he had it. I was just looking at my eyeball. But if you're right, if you tell me he's got it, that's a no-brainer. Absolutely. Um, okay, so... Oh, no. What's the elite token? For the shooters? Okay, never mind. Because I was looking that's at... That's interesting. Left Sorry. his Warlock all the way back there. That's it's, an interesting move. Yeah, because he's not inspiring. That. Oh, he's got an inspiring talisman. Maybe that's why. <laughs> but... I don't, I don't know. Yeah, in case the in case the catapults decide to shoot the shooters, right, make it that much harder to yeah, kill them. I right? guess. I guess. There's some value to that. I mean, and um, and it's not like in one turn he can't get onto a token. He can still mm. hustle. Right. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna end the game there for sure. I think he'll he'll you know he'll have lightning bolts to throw out. I, I didn't see any lightning bolts last turn, but we'll see here. I guess. You shoot the catapults at the warlock. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't know, know that, that they could see him through the forest. <laughs> Might be able to get one, maybe two. No, all three should be able to. Is that a forest or a swamp? Uh, yeah, that's a swamp. That's not a forest. Is that a height zero, zero, I think? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if he wants to, he can do it, right? Ray, would you do that? Or, or just for the, for the meme or what? Well... In fairness, there's no negative one because he's not an individual, so it's right. five, yeah. six is to hit. That's the inspiring source, so once you get it, then the shooters are uninspired. Um, right. Yes, yeah, so assuming assuming target one and two was shooters and warlock, it makes sense to shoot the warlock first, right? Um, if but you're doing that. From my perspective, chariots are one, hunters are two, and then I'd go after the shooters. Right. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, take take care of the stuff that's going to hit you most first, um, because those are the things that can delete my hordes. Not that I have a lot of hordes left, but um. yeah, no, I agree with you. I mean, I think I mean we talked about earlier, right? It's like that's ultimately to win the game, you kind of have to have a couple of those survive, right? You gotta you gotta score points on the objectives, and so. Okay, is he charging the hunters? I don't mm -hmm. know about this one. Like. Write it down. It's going on the list. Yeah, <laughs> high, very questionable. I mean, uh, they have a snare to... and they're hindered, right? I mean, this is this is. Well, maybe he's just looking to block them up. But like maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But then why don't you just block them up? Why don't you just sit in front of them? Why, why charge? charge right? Why declare that charge? How many wounds I mean, do you expect to do? they've got Pathfinder, don't they? Oh, do they? Hunters, hunters, hunters have got Pathfinder. So oh, the hunters the, yeah, do. So yeah, yeah, for sure. You may as well charge them, I guess then. But but then your flanks open to the scarecrows. Like as much as they have whatever yeah. number of attacks, they're hitting on sixes. Yeah. I mean, it'd be, it'd be worse than that because they're in snare as well, aren't they? So there'd be half your attacks on sixes. Yes. So I mean, yeah, not really expecting to do anything at all. So it looks like he did uh, correct it as well. So whether he heard us or not, he decided against it. Ultimately, <laughs> he didn't like where they ended up. Maybe maybe he's just checking the angles sometimes. You know, I, I I have a lot of respect for people that want to check the angles and. You know, where are they going to get flanked by Scarecrows, yeah. right? Sometimes your eyeball tells you one thing, but you want to see that final position before you actually move it, right? I, yeah, I don't and, and Steven oh. is a very careful, deliberate player. Um, right. Not not quite slow, but that is only because we have other players in the meta who are ridiculous. So, oh, yeah? Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, yeah. Why do they just, uh, we just, we've just come off the back of a four hour stream. <laughs> um, this morning with uh, Alex Coos and Ryan Montel. Um, yeah, so I'm sure that'll be. Um, yeah, I wonder what the driver was for Mike riding a clock that could work on for online games. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, has anyone tried to use that yet? He went through. Yes, I haven't. It's awesome. It's brilliant. Oh, yeah? Okay. I love it so much. Mm, yeah, yeah. So. That's awesome. No, I think I think that's a, there's a lot of sense to that. I mean, I think even in, even in UB, you can do it quite well. I mean, I'll say, like, a lot of the downtime from actually playing the game on tabletop is rolling the dice takes a lot of time. And UB, you can roll in seconds, right? So, yeah, I yeah. Mean, 
Yeah, I get. I can get they... if I'm playing with a regular opponent. We can get our UB games down in 90 minutes, like a 2,300 point game in 90 minutes, because yeah. all of the stuff that normally takes the long time, like the precise movement and the rolling of lots of dice, just happens very, very quick. Right. Um, and so then you've just got to get better on your decision making. Um, right. Right. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I mean, I think I just shoot for like two hour game. That to me is like the sweet spot of, of you know, 90 minutes is, is even better. But not 90 minutes is, is pushing it. Like that's when right. we're not really having, you know, we're not um, chatting right. as much. So two hours is normally what we'd, we'd aim for, but that's a good sure. window of, um, you know, you're able to chat and talk about whatever else is going on. Well, what is, what is so, yeah. so they are nimble. Maybe he's trying to get around them. But they're not what? strider Tip either. Twice. Right, I mean, maybe he's trying to see if he can just out arc the guy, right, and move around him. But mm. um, yeah, no, he says, he says no. <laughs> yeah. Can't do it. Go in. Again, just checking, right? It's one of the things you want to check. Your eyeball tells you no. You know, we all look at it and say, yeah, there's no way you can get around it. But yeah. until you actually measure, you don't know. So um, you know, and that's what things like clocks are for. It's like you know, if you're not on the clock necessarily, why wouldn't you check those little things and kind of you know verify them? I mean, and you know. It gives you a better idea for next time you play it. Sometimes some armies you don't know as well. You say he's kind of relatively new to goblins. He doesn't know quite all these like angles. Can I ball it as well as he used to? You know, um, you know, especially some people are, are used to playing certain regiment sizes, horde sizes, etc. Um, I think that's that's something it takes a while to get adjusted to. I know, um, for example, I've never really played with infantry hordes very much. Um, so like I know I'd be thrown off if I was, if I was in an army like this where I have to deal with three or four infantry hordes um, and then kind of adjust it really quickly. Um, I don't know if you guys had, had similar experiences to that or not. Uh, no, for sure. So when I was playing Orcs a lot, and then when I switched to um, Northern Alliance, and all of a sudden I'm using regular infantry, not heavy infantry hordes right. and regiments and that, and it's just like, oh, these things are so tiny. Um, <laughs> right. Look at all this room that I have for activities. Exactly. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, as compared to Orc hordes, everything is tiny, right? Yeah, those things yeah, yeah. are ridiculous, yeah. Well, I, that, and honestly, I mean, I used to run three or four regiments of orc axe instead of two hordes because right, the orc yeah, hordes it's, it's just, too unwieldy. Yeah, it's just, well, for me, um, I know obviously people have had a lot of success with the orc hordes or slave yeah, absolutely, orc hordes, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, if Eric Tobers is here, he he'd have he tells how he has no problem at all using them, right? So, I mean, definitely depends on the player. Um, but again, it's one of those things you have to get used to, right? If you're a new player. Um, you're going to struggle is because you're not going to see the charges getting hit against you, is, you know, and things like that. So it's not even it's not even the charges so that you make. It's sometimes what, the charges you make. What's happening on the board? So we're looking at the winger? shooting. Shooting now. Okay, okay so yeah, shooting starting from the winger. Okay. All right. Three damage, not and too big a deal so far. But that was from the uh, iron, the wing it. The wing it, Has just you put the regular shot. the sky shot. on the shooters? Hang on, how does iron the sky work? It's, uh, I think so anything within range 24 or... Yeah. Oh, so it doesn't have to be a thing that he doesn't can have to be seen. Yeah. Oh, right. So he's marked. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Right. Uh, right. Why would it need that crazy disgusting. restriction? Right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this is. It's, it's, why is uh, he bringing three of these things? But yeah. I, I honestly, I was going to ask that question earlier if you, if you let me. Like, I mean, I take, sure. you take three trombones, you take three warmers, but you don't take the three wingers. I mean, ah, man, they're so good. Man, they're so, so good. So difficult to deal with. So difficult to kill. I mean,. Um, and the fact that they score too is, is kind of the icing on the cake with them. So only the one, only one hit so far. So oh, the machines with one hit, which is average-ish, I guess. Yeah. And then oh. Swords. See five looks like. Mm -hmm. Is that from all three? Yeah. Might be able to get them next turn. Five again, not bad, not bad deal. I mean, those are doing five wins a turn. Um, if you're Kyle right now, you're again, you're very happy with that result. I mean, that's that's. Five's not enough to quite deal with them yet, so. Five, twelve, that should be fine. Nope. Uh, Taz, can you check the blaster in front of the hunter? Uh, what um, arc are the hunters in? The front or the flank of that blaster? The hunters are in the front. Ah, uh, no. Oh, maybe not. Okay. That's so he has to kill the bigot, overrun, then hit the corner of the blaster, and then he can swing around and mm. pick up and place there. Yeah, yeah, that, that seems yeah, good. Yeah, it's a a lot has to go right. So he's he's gonna hit the uh, the important thing though he's gonna hit the blaster first though, right? If he goes straight forward, is that correct? Uh, let's have a look. So the right. hunters go straight forward. 
Yeah. Uh, Ooh. Ooh, uh, it's hard to tell, right? Yeah. It's really hard to tell. I think you yeah. might end up getting the blaster. Okay, can you see my mouse? Down yeah, I can. It, it's yeah, exactly. It's hard to tell yeah. that you know. That the, the, again, I don't know if Stephen looked at that closely enough or not. If he... Right. So what's happening now? Um, this is like Earth. combat, right? No, I think combat. This is right. Steve's so monster. Right. Two hits, four damage. <laughs> well, four blast and <laughs> right. three damage, which is disappointing. Uh, let's get a lull going in the chat. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Four more ones. It's always sad when a blaster just fizzles. Right, right. Especially, yeah, I mean, this unit, I mean, he's not... How much damage is looking at now? 14? I mean, it's it's dangerous for sure. Starting to get there. Yeah, I mean... I but he has... So it, let's, say, let's say the chariots survive, right? And then they spend one more turn and they go through the rabble in one turn, let's say. I think they're wavered. Then they're, they're shot oh, off. Oh, wow, really? What do you roll? Seven? Yeah. Maybe we should take them off, I think. No, because they're 20, uh, uh, 22. It's 2022. Well, how many ones do they have on them? Sorry, maybe I misunderstood. I thought they had 14 on them. I think oh, sorry, they had 14 up. on them. They'd be 20. No, they have 12. Okay. Oh. Then they're fine. Then they're definitely fine. Yeah, they look, actually, they look perfectly fine, oh, right? Is that, is that a. Oh, oh, what's this? Nerve rolls. Is that a four? Is that a four twice for nerve rolls? Mm-hmm. Oh man. But why no, did he roll twice a... for four? A four would. That's, that's a good oh, question. Oh, okay. So no. So that is the nerve roll on the um sniffs. The trolls. Oh, the okay. Sniffs. So okay. they are wavered, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We lost track of what happened there. So no, they're dead. So it was a twelve plus a seven. Is that right? Is that what happened? So yeah. nineteen. So, so they're fine. Like so they're yeah, actually fine. fine. Okay. One. Okay. So the chariots okay. are. We lost track of the wounds on them. I think is what we sure. couldn't keep up with. Um, yeah, so that's actually a big deal. That's a very big deal because those chariots will hit the rabble pack well, very take hard. The they'll take yeah, the rabble. Right? So they'll, let's say they take out the rabble and then they right. get shot off, shot off by the trombones and whatever else. Yeah, that's... next turn. Um, so I think uh, it's looking like I'm getting that beer, Ray. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Me too, I think, huh? Yeah. Um, but we'll see. We will see. Double he just has a lot of sources of shooting. Right, right. I mean, I'm I'm impressed. I mean, I think uh... five wounds, five wounds on the void lurker off the hindered more beasts. That's um. Yeah, they hit on threes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I kind of agree. You go back to why fours. why give that charge to them, right? I I, I don't yeah. understand. Try, I was trying to rationalize that in every way possible. It just doesn't make any sense. He should have just charged them. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's still fine here, right? It's not like he's dead or anything like that. He's he's totally fine, but. Um, you're not going to take him off in one turn. Where if you had two turns to do it, you could have essentially done Interesting. it. Interesting. Right? So straight away he's chucked oh, the. Oh, so we can pop the uh, objective. Yeah. But then he's just sitting there and not charging because he can only pop the objective at the end of his turn. It's not yeah. at the end of your move or anything like that. But but he's riding off the chariots. Well, sure. I don't know. I mean, what's, yep. What do the chariots expect to do to the... the... Have 25 attacks on melee 3 with crush 1. I mean, that, that's some damage. That's not that's not crush negligible. Two. But if he takes... Crush 2, is it? Because they have brute yeah, strength. Yeah, they have strength. Oh, wow. Yeah, so why, yeah, why not just go in there? Three, if he takes off the you're rebel out horde, and then the chariots will die next, the, um, war, the warlord on the chariot will die, and that gives Steven the objective. So he's yeah. just denying him the point. To another point, yeah, yeah, but he also again it, the rabble. I mean, those guys they're they're not going to run to that. They're going to turn in the middle, and that's something you have to deal they're with. They're going to climb mean, that center. And then yeah, to worry I mean, about. I understand he made a mistake. Yeah. Maybe he realizes like you, he made a mistake. Should have burned it last turn or Should've two turns ago when he had the chance to. But given that, I mean, I don't know, man. Turning down a good, you know, good thirteen I wounds on the rabble, you could have done. I, I I don't know about that. That thing that's that's a lot of damage to to not do. Um, I mean, it's one yeah, thing if you're wavered it, and you have no choice, but if you're not wavered, I I, I don't know. I, uh, I think yeah. it was the right move. You think I so? I think he's All playing, right. playing okay. the objective. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's... it's Again, I don't know. Maybe he plans to shoot that rabble horde anyway, so he figures they're probably going to die. Um, we'll see. I mean, I, I do agree that it's it gives him the point. Shooting, but he doesn't have enough shooting to kill it in one round. See, in my issue, too, is I think, I think it's going to come down to the center objective. And, and then when if that's the, if that's going to be the game of slider objective, then you don't want that rabble horde oh, to have wounds okay. on him. Cause the Void Lurker is disengaging. Okay. And not counter charging. 
So what are you going to do with it? Hop it over the... He can't fly. Add a charge arc. That's really weird. That I, is really yeah, weird. Yeah, I don't... It's almost like they're a mobbies pack, right? Like, it's like, what, it's like, what is... Oh, okay, sorry. Is he doing some shenanigans here? Yeah, so... He's well, he's attempting to. I think he's... He, I think back. he's really going to try and get into... What? The war machines, maybe? Yeah. But at this Wait. point, you want to be start thinking about getting objectives. Because there's no How far away is he from the war machines? Right there. He is... That's 18 down here, so... It's uh, more than 16, right? In. So he's more than 18, 16. 19, more than 16, 20. yeah. More than 16. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So... so he's so, not going to... Still step another through. turn. But he can't he can't double over the fence, so he's gonna be caught next turn by the mob beast. If they wanna just turn around, they can just eat him, chase right? Him. Yeah, yeah, or chase him down. And if yeah. I was the mob beasts though, I'd be running them up the flank to, to threaten the scarecrows and the hunters because mm. Yeah, beasts, absolutely. Those scarecrows are not gonna last. Um if you get yeah, more I mean, beasts in the back of them. Absolutely. I mean, you saw even hindered there, they're gonna do they still do damage. So I mean imagine getting flanks or, or even rear he potentially, right? They're gonna do a ton of damage. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, so, six inches up or five inches up and turn left. Like right. if even yeah. if he takes out all of the rock lobbers for the rest, like even if the rock lobbers do no wounds for the rest of the game, I don't think that changes Stephen's plan at all. Because um, all they're going to be shooting at really is the shooters, um, which is nice, but doesn't change the arithmetic of what tokens can be contested. And reality is, the one shooter horde might be gone next turn from. The rock robbers at the, the rock robbers are getting another uh they're getting another one or two hits on that mm. yeah um, on average yeah i think I, I agree with you guys i mean it's it's definitely gonna come down to how how much you can hold off how many units can stay alive here um i understand wanting to kill the rock you know the rock robbers or the the catapults yeah. but it's it's you know i don't think that this is the right move of the dread fiend to, to you know if you're gonna do that do it turn one or something right or, or, or do it you know Doing it in a very it's quick almost way. like he's never used a unit before, maybe. Yeah. Man, um, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he should have out of the gate been more aggressive with that thing instead of kind of right back, and then you would have. Because I feel like if it gets the machines. charge on the more beasts, it takes out the more beasts. Like it'll take some wounds, and it might yeah, take three turns, but it's yeah, what I mean, five very, attacks, right? Very, yeah. Yeah, they have they have defense three. The nervous twelve fourteen. They're, they're gonna die. They're, they're not, they mm. can't take a hit. They have no inspiring there. I mean. You know, it, it's a unit that's kind of the, the role. Like being ignored is, is like what mobbies do great, right? Like 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 right now he's letting the mobbies get their maximum potential, which is kind of just charge stuff and get in the way and, and kind of run around. So um, I think you just charge them, you just deal with them quickly, and then, mm. then and the dread go, fiend so. has dread as well. So it's just reducing that low nerve even more. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. 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 So 13. I mean, agreed. Again, one thing Vicious. we'll grow on later. I feel like yeah, I feel like you take. You take the charge on the more beasts. You take them out. Yeah, you got some wounds on you, but whatever. Nothing else is going to tag you for the rest of the game. Right. Exactly. Uh, and who knows? Maybe they'll come in around and sneak in an objective or something later. Um, you know, throw in one extra unit strength you needed to, to win it. The uh, and now he's starting, move, to, he? starting to hustle his hustle his warlock up the top there, um, which is interesting. Um, yeah. I think, well, I mean, what's this Warlock has got? Lightning Bolt 3. Mm. Mm. But the uh, Scarecrow move is interesting because it stops the Hunters from advancing. Yeah. The Warlock should get extra dice to his spell, though, for the shooters. No, they're not Berserkers. Uh, I don't or think it, it has just... to be Berserkers oh, now. It does... Oh, okay. Nice. Yep. So it's just any large infantry regiment or horde or legion. <clears throat> Keywords, inspiring, nimble, ogre, warlock. So let's check the ogre, warlock special rules. For each friendly core, large infantry regiment, you are correct. Okay. Cool. There you go. Yeah, so lightning so four, five, I mean, a little more threatening for sure. But what's he going to shoot it at? Maybe the blaster? Can you see the blaster? Uh, yeah, he can see the blaster over the rabble, yeah. That's a decent uh, shot. Be the target. Yep. Uh, that'd be my target. Yeah. Defense five. That, blasters being defense five sucks. I hate it. <laughs> there are yeah, I mean, a cartload of explosives. They should be defense three. You but can anyway. see the war trombone. Uh, not over the hill, I don't think. Oh, uh, but the one that's in front, that one. 
Uh, well, yeah, okay. There's that gap between the hill and the rabble. Yeah, sure. But they can. He can see over the rabble too. Yeah. Sure. Oh, he's he's sending blast or anything. So. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there we go. Or you just go like that. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that is at Four least hits. what three hits and one wound. Oh. Oh. Oh, because <laughs> oh, he's saying cover. Okay, sure. He's got cover. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. Wound. Well, one wound. Now he's just, he's just roll a nine here, right? You can kill it. Yeah, he's inspired. Nine, nine twice. Uh, Alright, roll nine twice, no big deal. Yeah, the king's right there. <laughs> My favorite strategy is just roll better, you know? I feel like <laughs> blasters also should not be able to get the benefit of inspiring. Um, you know, it's not a matter of them sticking around or not, it's whether they get blown up or not. Um, it's not a matter of the, me the you know the grit and the nerve of the individual troops at it. It's whether a spark lands. In the right do you have a thing against blasters? I'm, I'm I do. I hate them. Story. Sounds <laughs> like it. Yeah. The bias is coming in. So you know when we're talking about how Stephen's been um, sort of testing out these lists in Australian tournaments. Guess who right. he's been playing in Australian tournaments? Um, and it's just. Yeah, you, know. you felt the the wrath here, huh? Yeah. Uh, it's all right. It's all right. It's just no. for 60 points, they can delete like a 250 point unit sometimes. And it's just, ugh. I've been there. I've been there. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, yeah. something I feel like every Kings War player, if you haven't lost a game to a Goblin Blaster, then you're doing something wrong. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, oh, it's man, a rite of passage that you use. Hugh, the salt. <laughs> oh, blasters. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Never I had my moment. Something with so much sodium before. <laughs> exactly exactly it's, it's i mean i love it i, I think it's fantastic it's yeah it's like I, that. I, do, like, I, I genuinely love the unit in the sense right that right the game. i i do get uh, those limitations like having three of them uh like may, all right like you know maybe maybe you're taking a bit overboard like one or two moment, more fun the risk reward ratio is a bit down though because it used to be in second edition they were tricky to use because they could damage your units right yeah whereas right. now there's no chance of them damaging your units so yep. that's why I feel like there should be lower defense or not be able to be inspired or something like that because there's not that much risk to using them anymore. But on the on the counter, like you can just charge a goblin blaster in second ed you sure. that was you a big risk because they would explode at the end of the combat. So their movement their movement is their only Achilles heel at the moment. Mm. You've just got to try and hit them first. Yeah, so basically you got you almost have to deal with them in combat now, right? It used to be the opposite it used to be you shoot yeah. them down and, and they're yeah. dead. Now they're they're tougher to kill in shooting, but much easier to kill, much less risk in combat. Yeah, so it's it is really an interesting little twist on them. Um, which... No, I think they're a great unit. Now, I, I I would like Kings to have more of that sort of unit that is you know just yeah. different, yeah. and you've got to think mm. about it. Um, right. Because it's very it's a lot of character. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, I think it's you know. I think we're gonna have this conversation, uh, right? Like, you know, how many units can you say that melee, about? So, oh. what's going on there? We get to see the king, the warlord. Okay, so the right. shooting, the so shooting. He's... Uh, he rolled a nerve rolls of six, which did something, and then a three, which did not. So, I, so it looks like he only did four wounds on that rabble horde there from the shooting. Yeah. I'm, I'm usually pretty good at talking oh, over yeah, sure. combat, so let me know when I'm rambling too long here. Right, no, no, that's right. Just letting the uh, the viewers know. What's yeah, for sure. Shot, damn so, yeah. Wa wavered. He's moving a wavered token. No. Okay. Yeah. So someone's wavered. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. So you roll a ten. He so did more beasts. More beasts to wavered. He did. How many was it? Three. Yes. One. One. One moon. Oh no. Because they're twelve, fourteen, aren't they? The right. Moves. Right. So he's yeah, got yeah. the brutal plus the ten. Plus, yeah. The, plus the uh. The twelve. Yeah. Plus the ten. Yeah. Alex, can we call that your official motto of Kings of War? Just, just roll really good on nerve. And exactly. Yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't think that really helps the chariots though, because he's got those trolls coming in on his flank. Yeah, yeah um, it's gonna hurt. I mean, trolls aren't that bad. I mean, they're hindered, gonna hurt. Hindered trolls in the flank. Yeah, yeah. I think he can well, survive. He's got five it. wounds on him. Oh, um, never mind. You're sorry for the five. Yeah. Yeah. See what I mean? yeah. 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 I agree. With you, yeah. So. But yeah, I agree with you, Ray. I mean, it's better to be lucky than good, right? I've said that consistently. <laughs> so you know, I. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, and you're, uh, other model was don't be flanked, if I recall. Yes. Sure. Yes, so exactly. we're looking Deep at the combat advice. with the scarecrows. The scarecrows roll thirty-five attacks, uh, nine, nine hits, sixes. and <laughs> <laughs> nine oh. hits. So I mean, okay. thirty-five attacks, looking for sixes. Why and not? Right. Then five wounds, and then a nerve roll of uh, six. So they very decent damage. Nine. Very respectable damage. Um. 
then the hunters the hunters are gonna evaporate that character. Yeah. yeah yeah he's out of there but like oh. you said ray said earlier he blocks them so they can't do anything yeah. now so no, everyone you can just pivot mm. and then just right get charged, so charged, he's, yeah. yeah he's gonna say eat that blaster in the face which is you know if it's it just a blaster blast, right it shouldn't be too bad i, I think i mean it's, it's livable right i mean one thing I don't oh. like is I don't think I don't see an inspire nearby here as long as carry thing, right? But check oh. out he's got to he's got to watch out for the more beasts. Yeah, oh. he rolls a three on that yeah, world. Yeah, so shot, check out that arc. Flank. So he's um. But the oh, is, oh, can he see? No. Okay. But the, range is, the range is fourteen inches. Uh, yeah. On the mobbies. Yeah. So, so he's out of arc. So but he's just got to be careful with how he reforms. Well, watch okay. hard is D three though, right? So theoretically, the max they could get is fifteen. So, All right, I mean, that's his turn. small chance, so but, is, you know, but why take the now, chance? How far away are the war trombones from the hunters? War trombones. Very far. Very far. Okay. War trombones yeah. are over on the other side of the hill here. Yeah. 24, something like that. Yeah, I mean, I think I see, I see some, you know, trombones probably moving up towards the center, committing to the, maybe the chariots, freeing up your shooting to kind of take care of everything else. Yeah. Um, you cool. know, if he's if he's a good turn of shooting here, you'd say the chariots and the shooters both die. Mm. That definitely puts Kyle, I think, on the back foot a bit. <laughs> At least if I was Kyle, I'd be kind of expecting that. Uh, you, you should you know, kind of plan for okay, that. Okay, so he did delete. So the chariots yep. on the hill delete a token. They remember that. For sure. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, after all that time I and effort. The one in the forest as well, he also deleted. So the only tokens we have left on the board are there's Just one in the bottom corner down up. here. Um, then there's two up the top, nice. and then the central yeah. one. So, silly question: How how do the uh, mobbies go to the side if they're wavered? Um, they can't. They can go backwards. Do they forget they're wavered? They're nimble still, aren't they? Can <laughs> they just go backwards? And they are them? nimble. Right, so but like, they. I mean, maybe they're not wavered. Maybe that's weakness. No, it's wavered. <laughs> no, he's got nothing. To uh, <laughs> so yeah, he's just gone backwards and pivoted, right? But move back, okay. then pivot, then move. I guess. Yep. More. I don't know, because he's only going back three inches, right? That, uh, that doesn't. You can go back half his speed. Yeah. So his speed is speed six. That's speed true. Six. You are nimble, so you can move yeah. back a bit. Move. Right, and so the, is that what he did? Maybe just angle it. Disengage one inch. Disengage yeah. one inch, pivot, and then gone back a bit more. Okay, yeah, that, that okay. seems reasonable, actually. That seems like maybe that's what he did. Uh, and he's hustling up to where the memory of the token is. Yeah, right, right. Um, but and maybe then, he's looking to. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah of course he is. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. um, he's going to take another turn to get there, but still, that's fine. It's yeah, he's got time. I mean, we're looking great. at turn three. He's got three more turns at least, so that guy is going to be a huge threat in a couple of turns here. <laughs> That's a pain in the ass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the last thing you want to deal with as an ogre shooter. Uh, this is like the nightmare scenario for ogres, right? You got things coming yeah. down your flank. You got shooters facing forward. You got well, nothing you can and do. And with the more beasts on the other side, so these more beasts over here, he's going to have yeah. a double outside contain um, to use a football, American football reference. Um, and that's yep. just going to... Um, Ugh. Yeah, it's it's a tough spot. I mean, I ogres it's, they was, have this um, trouble. I thought Carl was doing really well for a while, but now it's looking. <laughs> it's yeah. doing it's as well as he could. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, he, we knew he was going to lose the left. You know, we kind of expected that. Um, yeah. I think it was more question of what was going to happen on the right and can he win the middle. And this is again, yeah. I, I I, I'll go back to rabble, it. I think if that horde of rabble that's moving right now was dead, and if yep. he deleted that token a turn earlier, right? Um, Agreed. And Agreed. Killed that things. Sure, everything else is still dying. Like the chariots are still dying and stuff. There's just less to to do that with. Um, and now it's hunters. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I completely agree with you. I think I think that cost him quite big. Not blowing up that token earlier. You know, yeah. not letting the chariots do damage. I mean, because even if they don't kill the rabble, even if they do ten wounds, right? Let's say they, they kind of roll poorly. Yeah. Ten wounds is a lot. I mean, that that puts them within a, a small range of you know five or six mm. wounds more of killing that unit. So like so now you have this fresh the unit. He's hoping to wing it. The trombones, uh, the trombones, I, the trombone, I imagine. Trombone. One, one trombone yeah. can shoot. The other one. Uh, what about the trolls? Trolls in the flank. Yeah, he hasn't moved them yet. Oh, mm. could be that. that could be yeah, that'd be, that would do it. I mean, it only takes a few. There, there's so many wounds on him, right? Shouldn't take much. There's so it's I mean, what 36, 36 on fives with crushing two and defense. 
five. So yeah, you're looking at around eight damage, which should be enough. But I don't know, hitting on fives is even thirty six attacks though. I guess he's just got to hope. Sure. And then what are they going to do? The chariots are going to charge forward and take out one of the war trombones. I guess. That's well, right now they can get the rear, rear on the uh, rabble. The the yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna grab the beer, so um, <laughs> I'll be right back, gentlemen. Let's carry on. No worries. Check this out. I can just remove him. Because <laughs> <Hey. laughs> <laughs> he didn't, he didn't, uh, he didn't mute his camera or disable. Uh, did, he didn't mute his mic or disable his camera, so we get to hear him like yelling at his kids or whatever in the background. Mm. Uh, Taz, where are you from? Uh, I am. So I live in Canberra at the moment. But okay. I am originally from Tasmania, uh, which is the island off the south coast of the Australian continent. Um, to put it in a North American context, it's basically the West Virginia of, um, or maybe like some of the Atlantic states. Um, uh, so like the, um, like Nova Scotia or something like that. <laughs> um, very beautiful. But now the main industries are weed and meth. Uh, but no it's it's lovely i love tazzy but no so yes um if you are wondering about my name uh, it's not because i was born in tasmania because i was not born in tasmania um mum and dad poor that would have been yeah, 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 no. that's after the state um mum and dad met on a dad was on a football trip and mum was on a netball trip and they met in new zealand uh, in a very classy in a very classy encounter i'm sure okay. um, and that's in new zealand which is across the tasman sea um so yeah yeah they still named you after a, a yeah they named me location. after a geographic <laughs> location yeah um, okay, so the trolls are going into the flank. The winget is, I guess, trying to shoot. Zipping off? I don't know what the winget's trying to shoot. He's not doing anything this time. I, I think the winget's just eye in the sky. And the uh, mobbies on the right did exactly what you said they would do, which is go up and, and threaten the flank of the hunters. Yeah. yeah. So I, that, that dread fiend has done five wounds to more beasts the entire game. Um, it may no, get to kill five, a war the, from uh, a big rock. The five wounds are on the on the dread fiend. Oh, yeah, sure. The dread fiend. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Okay, so the hunter has charged. No, the, he's blasting. Okay, he's charged the blaster. Okay, so shooting. Let's what's shooting? What's he going for? He's going for the shooters with what? What is shooting the shooters? I think the only thing that can shoot them is the catapults. Yeah. yeah. So we're going one, and it is one hit. Yeah. All right. Two, so wounds. To so two wounds. Help my partner with some farm stuff. So I'll be back in a couple of moments. No worries. Now oh. I'll do that. And yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Benson knows what he's doing. All right. Welcome back, Alex. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Okay, we're looking at some gross shooting here. From... Just in time for an action, huh? Oh, wow. Yeah. That's 12. Yeah. That, that's the end of them. 12 yeah. hits? Why is he rolling 7? Is that not 12? Oh. No, that's the that's because he rolled two, um, two threes, like because it was 2d3 plus 1. So, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, so, yeah, so it's uh, 2 so plus... 7 hits, so he's done another 5 yeah. wounds or something. Yeah. So, for that round of shooting all up, he's looking at another... Seven, Six, wounds seven. Or so. Still yeah. probably enough, to be honest. Um, and the one hit, and then three. That's another one from the bow. Uh, right. Yep. Yeah. Sure. So, because uh, Kyle hasn't put the wounds on the unit yet. Right. Right. He's Maybe waiting. Right. Kyle you know, he expects more coming. Yeah. 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 Um. All right. Yeah, they're gone. So with an overall of, yeah, two an overalls of seven. Um, okay, so that's, yeah, shooter's gone. That'll do it, man. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, yeah. kind of saw it coming, right? Looks like the trolls did slam in that unit chariots as we kind of expected there. Um, yeah. So, I mean, things, just a lot of units being picked up this turn, right? Not a good turn yeah. um, no, for Kyle here. Good. Turn four. Man, man, we may we may wrap this whole thing up in two hours, gentlemen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
We'll see. I mean, the, when the if the things are going to start going right for Kyle, I think it's going to start with that that uh, blaster on the yeah, hunters. We're going to need that to whiff, right? Yeah, you're going to need a yeah, big whiff. You need it. a bunch of whiffs. He needs whiffs on the hunters, whiffs on the chariot. Um, <laughs> right. And he needs the shooters to just start going absolutely ham on what I don't know. Yeah, well, exactly. I, don't I, even think know he, I think he did just whiff on the uh, yeah. warlord. 10d6. Is that uh, hold on no, a second? Okay, so that's the that's the trolls into the flank. Oh, so it's just it's enough though. Now because they're yeah, because they're crushed too, right? You moving on threes. Yeah. End of the day, it's still nine wounds. So I mean, that's yeah, that's yeah. gonna be gonna that's be that. enough. Yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah, credit credit so Stephen. Stephen's got to be thinking he needs to capture four tokens plus the center one to get five bonus points. Right. Um, so I don't think he can do that because there's only one, two, three tokens left on the game, um, plus the center one. So Stephen cannot uh, the, get 25 points. The center one's worth two. It's worth two for the bonus points. That's what I'm yeah. saying. So right. So he can... Oh, right. No, never mind. Yeah, you're correct. He can get three bonus points and then the center one. Um, unless if Kyle decides to delete the one that he should have. Does he, uh, he out of spite? Do you just start burning? Yeah, your yeah. And does he run his warlock? <laughs> does he run his warlock near the right, other one? Right, you run your shooters that one, you know, warlock the other one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, why not, right? <laughs> why, oh, what, I mean, what else is he going to do? What else is he going to do? Exactly, right? Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. you take your opponent down with you, right? It's a very, uh, it's a very goblin thing to do, right? Against goblins. Very yeah. ogre thing to do. Yeah. If I'm going to get beaten by a bunch of little dudes, um, I'm going to. Right. Exactly. I mean, yeah, this is looking rough for sure. I mean, those, those, uh, even those mobbies now are a big threat. Like it's, and again, an unnecessary threat too, really. The Dreadfiend could have just dealt with these guys. Um, unfortunate. Um, and, and this is, yeah, dwarven darkness. Uh, so dwarven darkness in the chats to uh, to to say to you, it's unfortunate that Kyle is he he's fought well. He's made like one mistake, but that's not too bad. Right, game with this many interactions, like making one mistake isn't bad. I just feel like he brought a like novelty party blower to a gunfight. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's probably it's probably the um the thing more than anything. For sure. I mean, he had, he had an idea with this list. He had, yeah. he had a dream, you know, a and, and right, right, exactly. And the dream is turned into a nightmare here, as they say, right? <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's the way it goes sometimes. So we're looking at the top of four, which is Kyle's turn. So now he's starting to think of what can I possibly do now? Is he, is he going to burn some tokens out of spite? I, I, I would love it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, honestly, I, I'm from Kyle. I'm still fighting this game. Honestly, I mean, we kind of missed the uh, the thing exploded there too. Seven wounds on the hunters. Um, yeah. Realistically, the hunters and scarecrows can maybe pick up that unit of rabble. Yeah. Then he's got some, maybe the more beasts, but then the lobbers might start looking at some stuff. Oh, it's going to be yeah. bad, but you know. Yeah. You have to assume your opponent's going to start rolling poorly. Like, uh, there's yeah, a certain yeah. degree of assumptions you have to make when you're when you're behind that, like. You know, I, I tend to call that kind of risk aversion, right? When you're, when you're, you know, games even or maybe it's tight, you don't want to take that much risk. When you're losing, you know, you assume all the risk, right? At that point, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, you yeah. know, why wouldn't you take those small chances and just go for it, right? Uh, that's that's how I play. It, 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 it can actually be quite dangerous, to be honest. And, um, there's there's plenty of situations if you sometimes you know it's something to know if you're if you're winning in a game and you give your opponent um some risky outs, you know, it's it's you shouldn't just assume he's not going to make them, right? I mean, I think there's a yeah. lesson to be learned there. Like, if you can kind of play it tighter and, and kind of win this, win some small or major win, you know, versus like go for this risky all in and kind of put your opponent in a position where he takes the risk back. Um, there's definitely, I think, value to kind of playing that middle ground. Um, you know, what if Kyle here starts, you know, charging everything, getting all his, his wound rolls off? You know, it it could could theoretically, you know, be bad. Um, I've just now that do, I say uh, that, I'll just oh. take a bio break, so I'll leave you to carry. Yeah, the sure, sure. I'll uh, talk away here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Dwarven Darkness. Uh, that's uh, Thomas. So, so, you gave Kyle this idea for this whole list, huh? Yeah. Uh, we'll say. I don't know if you uh, you wanted to play a hard mode with one hand tied behind his back, but it seemed, it seemed to work. So, nicely done. All right. So, Kyle's just committed here. I think he's he's uh, he's all in with his strategy. He has no choice but to just uh. 
move that dreadfeet over, maybe get to the middle of the board. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to picture scenarios here where where Kyle does win, and I, I, don't, I see it honestly. I think it, it's possible, especially with um, you know, he's got to pick up at least two units this turn. It's the only thing. I don't know if he's going to do that, but he needs to do it somehow. So tough playing from behind a very tough tough uh thing to do being kings i think uh there's a lot of value in playing from behind and trying to find the best moves and, and trying to figure out what to do alex do right. the aristocrats just steal the feed yeah just us buddy yeah exactly Sweet. The club. exactly we own this place now huh yeah we so, make all the rules not for long Fair. you don't not for long <laughs> you don't. i heard Dang. that i heard that all right oh uh, I thought we had it for a moment. I was going to my mother and I will talk to you later. Anyway, exactly. all right. I, I thought, I'll, I, you know, when I tuned in, because I, I kind of missed the first half, I was like, Kyle has complete control over this game. And now I don't feel that way when I'm looking at the map. Like, if I was tuning in now, I'd be like, shit, Kyle's in trouble. For sure, for sure. I mean, and, and honestly, you look at the, the, what happened this game. I mean, the first two turns went as... Well, for Kyle, it wasn't like anything bad happened to Kyle, right? I mean, he it's it's his chair. There were no like, spike rolls, there right? No, exactly. Um, if anything, he things went in his favor, I think, with some of the rolls, yeah. right? So, um, you know, again, it kind of shows things some of the power of this kind of goblin list and, and kind of well played, well piloted by a player that you now, know, let's assume that. how much does the picture change if this rabble of goblins is, is dead, right? Like, let's say right. that he deleted the thing, the chariots go in, take it off, and then the chariots die. How much does the arithmetic change? Because then you've got three big hordes of ogres versus yeah. a whole bunch of like unit strength one or two stuff. Um, I yeah. mean, there's the trolls over there, so that that makes the game really interesting, right? I think it does. I absolutely think it does. Alas, I mean, especially... alas and a lack. Um, but you know, if the scarecrows can put some hurt on this, uh, it's a counter charge. What are scarecrows hit on? Scarecrows, they're five, they I think. 35 attacks hitting on fives. Yeah, so, so I there'll mean, be sixes because they're hindered because he didn't counter charge. Right, so he's ah, probably right, counter charge. The hunters really need to go into them if you want any hope of killing them. And, and again, <laughs> this is where that mobby's pack again, that mobby has yeah. no business being there, but you know, no, they're no. Yeah, exactly. But now there's, there's somehow they're getting flanks. It's like, you know, it's just one of those things that, um, you know, we got to play the what if game, we got to play what if, okay, what if that unit was dead. But if you burn yeah. the token, kill the rabble horde. I mean, if it does, this is a much different game. I mean, I think, I think you know, you're looking at the potential of, of you know him shooting off. At that point, you only have to shoot off maybe one more unit of maybe the trolls, maybe the the mobbies pack to the back. You try to snipe them or something just to get points here. I, I don't know what he's going to do exactly. I, I, I do like on this right. This is the top. So this is Kyle's. So this is top of four. So I've got the sure. graphics. Sure, sure. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I do like uh, the movement with the uh, Dread Fiend. If you're going to go around, now he can see the uh, horde in the flank if he wants to charge that way. He at least has options. Sure, sure. That's that's not nothing. Yep. Um, and it also means that the Dread Fiend can potentially come in and start adding its unit strength in turn six. So if it's turn four, then turn five, it can move even closer, and then turn six, it can move in. But like... You know, for turn five, do we even bother attack war machines? Like, no, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shooting. Yeah. Okay, so the shooter is shooting that the chav. Yeah, the king on the chariot that's up on the hill. So it'll be pot shots. So hitting on sixes. Half dice. Um, sixes half dice. No, it'll just be sixes because he moved. Because he moved, it just goes to uh, minus two. Uh, minus two, right? Yeah. So yeah. Nine it's, attacks. It's, I gotta say, pot shot is one of those rules that, like, it sounds cool because you get shots that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. But well, it's it's a it's such wounds. a reduced two value. Wounds. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can have those rolls. You can always spike it and stuff. But yeah, um, I would. I think it would have been cooler if they offered like the ability to like maybe do half the range or something like that. So maybe like a shorter range, but just as effective or something like that. Like I don't know, just, did, um, just to make it feel like maybe more worth your while. The wing point. it around, did he? I thought the wing it was facing south of the board. No. Um, I, I think I would have liked to have seen it if they could um, pivot in place for minus one. Like they can't move, but they could just 
turn around yeah. 360. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what you really want to do, right? When, you, when you're, again, when you're ogres, right? You have this issue, these things come on your flanks and you can't do anything, right? You just want to pivot. You just want to look at them and shoot them. And you have to take a minus two penalty to do it. So it's like, yeah, you get shots, but it's, it's just a, such a hard tax to take. Uh, so the lightning bolt went into what unit? I, I thought the uh, trombone. It looks like he's missed anyway. Something with defense four. Um. Yeah. Look. Yeah. You're right. You got one hit and one hit and not materialized. Yep. Uh, so now he's testing nerve. Oh, ten plus three, thirteen. What's the goblin king's nerve? Wavered. Okay. So the, okay, the king lives. Up? Yeah, he lives, but he's wavered. <laughs> I mean, I get that was one of those things that, you know, I talk about what, what has to happen for Kyle to come back yeah. to the game. That's one of the yeah. things, right? That's so so the King yeah. lives. Um, he's got to kill that rabble horde in the middle now with the, with the two units. Um, and he's got to kill that rabble horde that the chariots may have killed. Yeah. So, I mean, 76, I... so this, the 76 is coming from what? Uh, the uh, Warlord chariot. Oh, that. yep, yep. So down the bottom here. Yep. Oh, yep. Okay. And now... Now the more beasts have the magwans have to do a unit uh, do some work on the warlord, but you'd think they should be up to it. I don't. Uh -huh. on him. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Actually, that that's that's actually developing into something. 15, 17, and magwans does magwans does twelve attacks with threes with crushing one, so twelve attacks on fours with crushing one and vicious. Yeah. So that's like I mean, three wounds. I, I, three wounds is not enough. I agree with you. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I think. Gosh, imagine if Kyle picks that one up. Then that changes. Right. I mean, that it's it could happen. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I think honestly, yeah. if I can get shot off the table, that, that's. I mean, I might not even charge him. I might just shoot him and just let him hinder charge into my regiment and hope that I live. Yeah, my one again. Because yeah. what else do you have to worry about at this point, right? Do you burn that token? No, uh, I think I that would drop you too many places. You know, right. like you, you're still thinking of your taunt final, yeah. taunt, or maybe you're thinking of final taunt classic. Uh, welcome back, Benson. Um, okay, so Thank what you. has happened Good in the time that you've been gone is uh, a lot of stuff has died, and like that blaster did anything against the chariot. Uh, uh, not a lot. No, seven wounds against the hunters on the other side, and five mm. wounds against the no, no, it, wall. It, did no wounds. It oh, was right. every roll. It was yeah, awesome. That sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, we, we, yeah, we're playing this game in our heads of like, what needs to go right? What, you know, series of unfortunate events happens that, you know, Kyle comes up with a W here, right? And and, and he's on track so far, right? <laughs> as far as I can tell. Um, you know, we'll see the rest of the turn here. But, um, oh, wait, as I'm think, talking, a lot of attacks. The horde. Yeah, I think the horde is dead. Yeah, so again, this this is this snowball is building up momentum here, right? It's rolling down mm -hmm. the hill. It's it's you know, things are going right. And then, you know, I said he needed to pick up a couple units this turn. He did it. Um he needs to survive the onslaught here. And again, it all takes one round of maybe all the war machines with and and, and then you have a game here, right? Um Oh, so question for you. Do you split your shooting? Are any of the catapults able to see the, the hunters? hunters? Yeah. Uh, Maybe one, not to the oh, two, two are three or not. No, that's unfortunate. Yeah, that's not what you want to hear. Ah, uh, uh, but you've got the you've got the more base over here. Um, yeah. Can... No, they shouldn't do have a rear charge there, huh? Uh, are they facing on, that the way? Speed on the more base. Speed six. Six. So no. Yeah. Oh, wild charge D three though. Yeah, that's the big. Oh, yeah. More base wild charge well, D three. The hunters six. are facing them actually, right? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, it looks yeah, like. Looking for a front. Yeah. Uh, have they deleted yeah. the token? Oh, they did. No token. Oh, you're absolutely right. Interesting. Okay, yeah, so, so now we're down to <laughs> three <laughs> tokens plus the central one. Uh, yeah, exactly. Are the shooter's gonna destroy their token too. I mean, that's when that's when you really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. End, right? <laughs> uh, I mean, honestly, I, I, it's not a bad idea, right? I mean, you destroy everything but the middle and just put everything in the middle and just hope for the best, right? I, I yeah, actually, yeah. I actually don't think it's a bad idea at all. No. Um, because, like, the uh, goblins have still got two more turns, at least, right. of, of shooting right. and stuff. And those war trombones, which have done sweet FA all game, mm -hmm. may all of a sudden come into it because they're going to do some work on the scarecrows. Oh, potentially. no doubt. No doubt. Or how far um, away are they from the hunters? 
Oh, okay. So now we are what we are the bottom of four now, aren't we? Okay, Brand. Sure are. Yeah. So, so you did not I like to blow up that one with the shooters again. I, I think that's actually going to cost them. I, I do think the shooters now, are going to die. If I'm Steven, I turn those trolls around, I think. Or actually, no, I spin the wavered dude on the hill around. So the way the, the dude that's up here, I spin him around because he's wavered so that he faces south towards this. So that if Magwans doesn't get through the chariot, you've got something oh. else coming. I, oh, I, I think that's ballsy putting the uh, mobbies into the hunters because you're ensnared and you're hindered. Yeah. And Anyone fives. That's not that's, a fan. Yeah, agree. Can't agree with you more. That's that's not the way. Uh, um, what would he be doing this... with those hunters if he if the right if you don't charge him right? Very good point. I, th I think. Uh, yeah, because so, what's he planning to shoot now, too, right? There's everything on the Scarecrows, I guess? Is that, is that the intention here? I think that, well, everything has to go into the shooters because they're the only thing scoring points, right? right? I, I guess. And that's, again, that's why, shooters, really, yeah. really why I wonder if the shooters didn't blow that token up. I'm honestly, I, I think as much as as much you, you kind of joke about it, I think, I think it's the play. I mean, I think, yeah. um, you know. The chance of those shooters surviving two and a half rounds of shooting impossible. is impossible. Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, you're really hoping on skew dice rolls at that point. Like, that's your, your, your strategy is, oh, he's just going to double. Yeah, up. even for my skew rolls, like, I, I don't, <laughs> that's, that's a stretch, right? Like, I, I can play around skew dice all day. That's one of my favorite yeah. things to do. So the trombones um, are trying to position themselves into oh, yeah. the thing, and they're both just within 12, so that's what he's doing. Yep. Um, then. The question is the trolls. I think that's valid. I, I would go after. I would actually move the trolls to take off uh, off the uh, warlord. Yeah, well, because they can't get anywhere in time. Uh, actually, no, they hustle. They move twelve, so they move up to they basically to the just middle. behind. The, they yeah. can get to middle in two turns. Yeah, I uh, I think I'd use the the goblin, the king on a chariot up on the hill. I, I agree with you, and, actually. I, I think I put yeah. the trolls in the middle. You want that unit strength in the middle. I mean, yeah. again, you got to assume like let's assume the hunters live. Let's assume the scarecrows live. You need unit yeah. strength in the middle to contest it. Like you know, yeah. nothing else is going to do. But, so the trolls but, have to get there. The the thing with this scenario is it can come down to a draw so quickly. Um, king can nimble pivot, and uh, if you move the trolls up, the king can see it. Can nimble pivot and do an evil Get rear, rear charge. charge. Yeah, uh, it's a good point. So, do you mean Very the king point. is in the warlord, the ogre warlord, or the yeah, goblin the, king? The warlord. The warlord. The yeah, because he's not locked down right now. Right? He he can just he can do a very disengaged, nimble, um, speed eight charge. Right, all that yeah. fun yeah. stuff. Yeah, so I guess he just turn around. Good point. And then Very good point. So, what does so that black I... flag meaning? This flaggy thing. I think that's just a thing that was forgotten about. It was on the sure. chariots. It was on the chariots. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure, yeah. yeah right. You make a very good point there, and I think I think after you move them, it's very what you said is very obvious. I think maybe it's one of those things that pre-move it's it's not so obvious, but you're, you're absolutely right. I think I think I think you have to turn the trolls around really when you consider that, because otherwise you're giving the potential for the guy just picking them up off the table with a, with a easy rear charge. Because that'd be what twenty-one attacks on threes and twos or something like that. Like, yeah, exactly. Or... Maybe you're hindered. Maybe even not. Right. I don't even know how that works. If you disengage and then charge, are you hindered at that point or no? I don't know, actually. If, if you're not counter charging. Right, so you started in the woods, but you disengage if back you and you're not in the woods. Are you still. You, you if you counter charge, way? like, so you can disengage and then declare a counter charge. No, no, no right. what, um, My point is, what if he disengage? He starts in the woods now, right? Where, where the king and the chariot uh, is, right? right? What if he yeah. disengages? He backs up and he's no longer in the woods. What if he declares a charge? Then is he is he hindered or no? No, no, he's not hindered because from his charge distance, he never. Even though he started the turn in the woods, okay. Yeah. So that, that's the yeah. the disengage is a sort of thing that happens before the start of the fight. Like, right. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, so you get your normal move order. So so that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I haven't obviously played enough here to see those little interactions there, but that's one of the things that could come up. For sure. So that's good. I mean, that, that means his, his you know, king on the chair is probably likely to be unhindered if he does charge something else. And the way he's moving things makes me think that the trolls will turn around. So I think you're right. I think your your strategy is going to come through here. Well, it's not really a good strategy. It's just what do you have? Ooh. Maybe not. I mean, this would be very interesting if it doesn't have. It's actually a we'll, we'll, quite a development, really. 
I, I would almost screen capture this one because this is mm -hmm. a, a good post game discussion. Right. If there is going to be a turning point here, this is going to be one of the factors, right, that goes into it. Taz, can you screen capture this for us? All right. He says done. So cool. We'll, we'll see how it plays out. I mean, I, again, it's, it's interesting to see these little nuances, right? I mean, a turn half ago, it looked like Kyle's going to get tabled. And maybe he's <laughs> all right. So who knows? But um, yeah. <laughs> but but uh, That's it's interesting. Cool. Little strategies develop, these little tactics come in. I, I'm a That's huge fan of ogre music. characters on chariots. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think one of the stars of, of the army, for sure. I mean, I think oh, the speed, the nimble, the, the power they have. The, the nerve, too, right? Because, I mean, that guy say, is there any chance that guy dying in that mobby fight? I don't think a chance in hell, right? I mean, he's got to have at least 18 nerve, right? Uh, I don't think he's that high. I think he's 15, 17 for some That's reason. Oh, muted. which unit are we looking there at? We go. <laughs> the ogre warlord. Yeah, the ogre warlord is 15, 17. Okay, yeah. I thought he was higher. Okay, so I was saying, is there any world where he gets, you know, even wavered from that unit? And maybe there is a world where that happens. Yeah, right? he's got staying stone, so he's 16, 17. 16, so, so you got to go 16. Okay, so. Unlikely. Right, right. So if they do maybe three wounds or four wounds, and then he rolls He could also a... just delete this token at the end of his turn, because he controls it. He's got the unit strength. Right. Um, so at so the end of Steven's okay. turn, he could choose to delete it. Um, and that makes things interesting. That does. So what's how's he shooting? Oh right, he's start, about to start. So on the why, wall, did he only, why did he only do three wounds on the? Oh, eight wounds. Okay. Uh, stealthy. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah but I, I was looking you at see the wounds. five and three kind of overlapping there. Uh, okay. Eighteen. Oof. Yep, that's. Okay. The one turn you want them to go okay. cold, they just go extra hot, right? That's the way it goes. Uh, no watch a late come in. Yep. Oh, no, not quite. Last one. Yeah, another hit. Of course it is, yep. Another two wounds, so... Our warlock sitting on eight wounds, looks like. 12, 14 nerve. 14, okay. So, the six here to kill him, he might survive. Doing it again. And he might have other shooting. Oh. He's, not he's got it. his little bigots with a bow and stuff. Okay, okay. I don't know the if shots we can, see. right? Ah, oh, shooting the shooters, yep, yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. Interesting choice. I mean, he, I guess this is kind of your strategy, Ray, where it's like, shoot the Warlock first, then shoot the unit. But I don't know mm -hmm. if that's the right decision here. Um this point in the game, you really want to kill the unit strength army. Is the unit strength in the list? But the uh, warlock's nimble unit strength. Oh, there we go. They're gone. Oh. Yep. <sighs> got it. All they needed was six. You got a seven, eight. So yep. Absolutely. Um, just pick them apart. Pick them apart. Right. Um, and he's still got two full turns, and then maybe seven. Mm. Right. Ugh. So now yeah. the combat. Combat. Uh, Magwans so, looking for what is it fives? Yeah, I hope fours. 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 Should be fours. fours. Six, six, and then is with vicious lead as well. Vicious or? reroll. So he's oh. got crushing one. He's got vicious. So he's looking for fours. So oh no, has he killed it? No, uh, nothing. No, so, I think it holds steady. Ten right. kills it. Ten killed it with seven. the reroll. He's good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. So he's the, uh, uh, the wonder of staying stone. Yeah, Absolutely, dude. Best five points he spent. For Fifty sure. percent reduction in your waiver chance. All right. right. And every game. Yeah. Uh, um, but do I think the ogre warlords take out Magwans in one turn? I mean, maybe. Seven of that. Um, we'll see. We'll see if he leaves that token there or not. Depends all on right, how if he wants to be. This one, they got one hit, one wound, and they're fine, and right? Nerve. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Okay, so hunters are alive and kicking here. The Dreadfiend is sort of back in the game, but not really. Um, well, it's one unit strength may uh, yeah, not for no, a little I mean, token, but for something else. Yeah. Right. No, absolutely. I mean, he could come in here and do some shenanigans here. All right, so that's the change of the turn, right? So we're at the top of turn five. I now. believe so. Yeah, I don't see anything left. They haven't said anything in the chat, but 
that's what it has right. to be. Okay, so yeah. he's withdrawn an inch, and look at this. Nimble so Kyle shenanigans. clearly sees what yeah. we see. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> not wasting any time taking that juicy rear charge, right? That's just what you take Terry to do, right? I mean, this is like, yeah. you know, you, you And you so hope. then even if the trolls die, what, the war trombones? Oh, uh, because then you've got, yeah, I don't know what you do with it then. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you're going you're gonna to shoot it off the table. I mean, he's not going to survive, but, you know, I'm it's gonna, what you can um, kill before you go down is, is what matters. I'm just going to email. I'm going to email Stephen the screenshot I took of him moving that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Periodically, I'll set it up so that it automatically sends it to him every week or so. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> right, right. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Send him the link to this video at the timestamp right, right exactly. where I'm at. Exactly. It's just like, you know, yeah. Right. every time he beats me, I'll just say, yeah, well, at least I didn't do this on stream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. The only problem here is we don't we don't have the players' faces. Like I want to see like oh, I want to see yeah, look yeah. at someone's face when they know they fucked up, right? It's like you know, <laughs> like get when that look in their eyes, right? When the warlord's like, knocking on his exactly oh, the, the second the second you close the charge, you you know what Steven's face look like right now? It's like oh we don't get that moment, but you know, yeah. um, we can ask know. him in the game thing to to do a recreation. Yeah, sure. There you go. Yeah, or maybe he's got some like three D. You know, chess sort of thing going on. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I wanted that to go go over right, there. Right, right. So I, I wanted them closer to my trombone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, they're close to my trombone. And yeah. I knew I was tempting him with the ogres because he is actually not above um, tempting units with. Like it's sure. an expensive temptation though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, but I mean, he still holds again, the objective. Right. Exactly. The yeah. only only problem. Yeah, the you know, scarecrow's coming out of here. I mean, they're probably hindered again. Again, the whole to me the whole deal is this rabble unit is untouched, right? This rabble unit needed to have wounds on it. Um, yeah, it, it'd be a completely Only different dead. game, completely if different game dead, if that unit was was guy. dead or about to die, right? Like that, Dang. it changes the dynamic right now so much. Um, yeah, but uh, but unfortunately, oh, it you know, would be to the point where if that unit was dead, I would say that Kyle was right. in a looking in the driver's strong. seat, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, like absolutely yeah, controlling all of the tokens. Um, however, coulda, woulda, shoulda, didn't sure. Sure, absolutely, absolutely, and and you know, and and again, it's, you know, who knows? Maybe he'll spike some rolls here and and, and waver them or, or lock them up, and they'll die to something else. Who knows? I mean, the dreadfiend now coming up. I mean, again, the trombones they have three targets to kill next turn. They can only do one of them, right? So, what three so, do you think? Which one of the three? You've got to do the scarecrows. The scarecrows, you've got to get their unit strength off the board because then you you know, uh, Stephen has a bunch of unit strength one things that can contest stuff, but he can't overpower the scarecrows unit strength, so you've got to get rid of them. See, um, I, I, I would say that your first priority is the warlord chariot because you can't have that in your back. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, this, I agree. I would shoot those first with the catapults, probably with the um. Like just because the stealthy on the scarecrows, um, you want to ideally get trombones into those first. I think like that's the the most bang for the buck, right? So, would um, would you shoot the scarecrows or just charge them with the rattle? Well, I, again, I'm kind of in the assumption that like maybe things go well. I mean, yeah, I mean, if, if the rabble are alive and kicking, which they probably should be, right? You probably do just charge them. But I don't know. You get the wing it there too. I I can see a world where you just sit back the rabble. You know, how many wounds do you really expect rabble to do, right? Uh, seven because they they hit on uh, the defense five. Three. right so even even seven that's not that unit's alive and kicking right so I then you, you put yourself now you, you've now given the scarecrow's ability to sit in the center of the board with with the you know enough wounds to at least take another round of shooting and and then you're rolling on that nerve check maybe maybe you get it maybe you kill them and maybe you, you know that's the way to go but you know I want I want to have two chances to kill that unit not just one and I want to right shoot them so out. he's put another five wounds on the um the dude on the uh, uh the, the king on the hill and takes him off okay that's a that's a big deal that's actually a really yeah. big deal so now uh, i i, I kind of made fun of him for not destroying that token now and i'm looking like the idiot so you know that that's a very big deal yeah yeah i, I mean here we go so what's this melee so we've got this rear charge so yep, what he's getting on threes and then threes and then twos is it Threes and twos, I believe, yeah, because they should—they weren't hindered or anything, right? Uh, so, but but they went have thunder. Thunderous would be stripped. Uh, oh, so was, was, crushed, was he crushed two then? I assume so. Yeah, crushed two. I'm not exactly sure. Okay, yeah. Uh, Ogre Warlord is. Thought I had the stats here, but apparently I'm wrong. Yeah, no, he's crushed two, so no thunderous. So hitting on threes with crushed. So oh, threes and threes. He seems to think he's hindered. Okay, because okay. Was he? Well, he withdrew an inch, and so I think maybe if we zoomed right in on it, like if we zoom in on here, 
and he withdrew an inch. Should have been clear, should I think. Have been yeah, out of it. Should yeah. Have been clear. interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that it's not necessarily oh, obvious, right. I don't think. He doesn't kill the trolls. He wavers the trolls. That's actually, yeah, yeah it's a big deal, that's, right? Cause... That's good for Steven because he just flips them around, regens. Right. Um, I mean, it still means his Ogre Warlord can then do another rear charge on the rabble. If actually, the rabble I haven't even still... flipped them around. Yeah, right. Because you kind of expect them to be ignored again, right? Well, because you're going to shoot the Warlord. You're going to try to kill it. Yeah, right. sure. Yeah, I agree. Agreed. I think that's, that's, that is my first priority target. Wow. So he did 10 wounds on that unit, huh? So he rolled it. Uh, sorry, just to kind of catch up with the rolls here. He rolled a four. Is that right? And so. Uh, this is the hunters going in. Oh, on the yeah. Sorry. So now it's yeah. going there. Yeah, yeah. Actually, don't trolls have fury? No, not normal. No. But this one does. Okay. So hunters but make quick work of that off. regiment uh, there. Okay. So the trolls are going to turn around and punch the warlord in the face. Um, so then you. I don't know if, how much shooting you can churn into. So all of his lobbers can shoot the hunters right now. Mm. Those trolls have Chalice of Wrath. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that gives them Fury, right? Fury, yeah, yeah. So the trolls are coming back. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the trolls are still alive. Okay. Trolls are going to declare yeah. a furious counter charge against the wall. Yeah, for sure. Why not? That's the easiest way to kill them. Let's yeah, do the shooting yeah. on other stuff. No one likes now, at this point, you probably... Yeah. Uh, I, I think you have to shoot the hunters. Yeah, yeah, I think no question. Have, well, you we start shooting them until you put some wounds on them. At what point you start splitting your fire onto, say, the right. scarecrows? I don't know. But right, so, bottom of five. Okay, bottom of five. Bottom All right, five. Let, me, let me press a thing. So and interesting, interesting here that I, I mean, it was such a close waiver roll. I wonder if those three extra hits he didn't get from the uh, hindered cost him that combat. Uh, let's see. Very tight, so, right? which one was it? I think scroll up. I think it was that one yeah, right I'm there. Yeah, I'm scrolling up. Was the 18 one? No, it was 21. No, oh, it was sorry. Higher. 21 attacks. Here we go. So it's this one. 21. So he missed out on three. Three more hits. Okay. So you, you, know, you say two more wounds on average. Maybe it doesn't change anything, right? Um, yeah. Okay. Just interesting Still. note there. Oh, the mob beasts are just running off to the like. Don't Security. shoot me high side. Yep. Yeah, they're trying to sure. get on the other side of the forest. Yeah. Uh, no question. Yeah, I mean they're at the moment. Right. They'll, they'll, you know, they're too low nerve, too vulnerable to anything oh, yeah. random fire. To kill that much, right? He can only maybe kill a trombone. Looks like here from all of a sudden done. Maybe he nibble. Uh, he can rear. He can rear the he trolls. Rear the trolls. Well, yeah, assuming the trolls are stuck in combat. <laughs> maybe assuming kill the trolls are not facing the right way. So with his regen, he went from he went from ten wounds down oh, to yeah. seven. He gets three of those back, which is fine. Like that's what you'd yeah. expect. Yeah. Um, then wing it. The so wing it and go in the flank of the uh, scarecrows. If it charges, yeah. Which but, would you do well, that? Right? No. Wing it. <laughs> Melee fives. Uh, oh, I, think, I think you'd use it to throw yeah. throw some stuff. Yeah. Oh, look. See, he's trying to grab this friggin' token at the back here. Oh, he'll get this it, one. yeah. He'll, he'll absolutely get it. Yeah. He's got another <laughs> turn to get it. So. Very rough. Well, yeah, hunters, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 I, I've been there where it's this wing gets, you, you lose the game, the only wing gets scoring objectives. It's, it's brutal. It's absolutely brutal because they, they've been peppering you all game. You know, you just ignored them or couldn't get some and then... Last thing they do is they all split and go twenty inches or ten inches and they just pick up all these objectives. So, it's it's a rough it's way the curse to... of playing ogres, especially on control when yep. they're sitting in the middle of the board and then turn six they just go doof and exactly. each grab a corner and they then grab it. Like... The objectives, corners, whatever you name it. I mean, when it's very 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 powerful unit. Um, this is a good way to use them if you're you know if you're taking notes as a goblin player. I think this is a perfect way to use them. You just kind of pitter patter and and you know score objectives. The key is to make sure they stay alive. Yes, exactly. I completely agree. Yeah, don't throw them away, and and they're hard to kill, use, right? I mean, use the six turns that you have. Yeah, exactly. Don't, don't feel like you need to the get shoot, the shooting is quite good. I mean, yeah, it's not going to be as good as as the 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 stone throwers, but you know, it's it's it adds up when you keep them alive, and and you know, the, the thing about them is that they have that ten inch movement and twelve inch range. So it's actually quite a large, you know, effective area of damage. So an ability to put. Uh, plink damage on to force. Yeah, exactly. Right at the yeah, end. I mean, I, that's, yeah. that's the unit I, I really expect to see, you know, maybe toned down or something in the future, I think. Um, 
well, it's tough because you know every time Mantic brings out a really good model, right. Um, right. you know, you just sort of think, um, are they just going to say? Can we just, you know, because that was the issue. Like when they brought out the Steel Behemoth, they brought out this kick ass oh, model yeah. for it. I know very well. And then the rules were terrible for it. Um, and so then they were just like, yeah, so maybe not do that again. And we, you know, we don't want them to go down the GW route necessarily of, well, right. you know, everything that just comes out is fantastic. However, I can, I can see why they would be like, the Winged is such a cool model. How about we not make sure, it? They give, so some, they give some unique rules yeah. and that's fine. But, um, yeah. Again, and, and I don't want to cry. This guy maybe is making right? living legend, um, so you can. Only yeah, I, I, I kind of surprised they didn't yeah. do that actually. Yeah, because yeah. I think it's cool. It's cool to see one, you know, and and, and I think one is fine. But when you see three and they and you just can't yeah, deal yeah, with them, yeah, yeah. you know, especially against ogres too. I mean, I don't think he knew ogres were coming necessarily, but he did. Um, but I yeah, so that. so I mean, if you know you're playing ogres, you take three. I mean, it's 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 going to be it's going to be such a headache mm. for them to try to deal with, right? So. Um, and things like that, the bangets too. I know he doesn't have any bangets here too, but um, those are all units that you kind of see do a ton of damage over the long run. But all right, um, so what's the shooting? So all the shooting's yep. going into the hunters, and what Big are we hit. looking at? Oh yeah. Okay. Big. Oh, four hits because he might be in the open. Oh yeah, he's, he's in the cover. He's not in cover. It because doesn't matter. The they flank. got yeah. they got all the wounds. Yeah, it's it's fourteen wounds. Plus, mm. yeah, cover's not going to matter in that roll right there. You got very taken care of. Uh, okay, yep. so this one's going into the Dread Fiend. Okay. Yeah, two oh, wounds. okay. So they two were stealthy there. Seven. So, yeah, yeah. So, Big so I was, uh, I was, yeah, it's a two wounds. And that was a good two wounds, too. It could have easily been less. So, um, <laughs> that's a big roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yep. <laughs> Really see, sensing the moment and, you know, <laughs> like realizing like we've got a lot on the line here, guys. All right. Time to right. see if I can hit that cloud. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Why not? Um, uh, what are we shooting at now? So it's... Assuming uh, it catapults, maybe? Or? Oh, no, there's a wing it. Wing it. The, oh, wing sorry. Yeah, yeah. Hiding in the forest there with the, yeah. camp, uh, with the camouflage. So That's chucking great. some grenades. One hit plus three, three damage. And then here we come with the... Okay, so the hunters are getting targeted by the lobbers with the eye in the sky as well. Oh, yeah. I think oh, he's no. Oh, he's rolling there. nerve. Yeah, yeah. He, he, they roll them all, yeah. 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 All right, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. So hunters kind of die. You kind of expect that, though, right? So there's nothing crazy. Wait That's for... rough. He didn't get to use the dragon shard shield. <laughs> surprise, surprise, yeah. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, when they're wavered, you can pop it. I guess that's that's a nice thing to do when they're wavered. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I believe me. I, I've tried multiple times to get that item to work. Like, I, I feel his pain. Like, yeah, I, mean, yeah, I see yeah. that. I kind of laugh when he said it. And no one's anything. I was like, okay, what, what's happening here? But you know, uh, it's, it's, well, I didn't want to say anything while the both the players are on. <laughs> no, you're right. You're um, right. You know, <laughs> it's just uh, like okay. I, I love it. Yeah. So now we're looking at what the top of. Top no, of uh, combat. Uh, yeah, of course, yeah, 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 I guess if this lord can survive here. Trolls into the warlord. Uh, very average rolls. Not what you want to see. No, nah, even above average, yeah. Surviving. Yeah, so they're taking six wounds. A oh, three will kill him, I think. Yep. Okay, yeah. so he was devastated, was it? Yeah, roll again, so. Yeah. yeah, there it is, yeah. Again, yeah, his nerves is not high enough to take that kind of damage. Um. Sad trom. Bone. Good, good call and give him fury. I would say, man, very, very yeah, smart yeah. choice from Steven there to give them that fury to, to, you know, it's a completely different yeah, game. I think like still alive. Take fury with trolls. It's yeah. Oh yeah, it makes sense with yeah. the, uh, with the, uh, you know, the the high waiver rat that they have, the high waiver value. Um. Mm. All right. So wow, this, this this is going to be. Has he done the combat with the uh, grapple? No, he's doing that now. Um, yep. Right. So, so he was Ray just... predicted seven wounds here. Let's let's see what happened. Oh, he's still uh, still shifting. He's around still deciding trolls. what yep. to do with his trolls. Mm. Because at the moment, I I think I'd commit them more just to. 
block the shooter lane against the mob beast. See, this this game is interesting. So normally with Northern King scoring, there is nothing. There is no um, benefit really to ever reduce the amount of scoring that your opponent gets. Like it's independent mm. of your score. Mm-hmm. This is the only scenario where it's kind of a zero sum game. Um, and so, sure. yeah, you're playing in this very, you know, is it worth me denying my opponent getting it or me getting it? Um, which in Northern Kings is not normally, you, you always think, I want to get it. I, I don't care how many he gets as long as I get more. Right. All right. I mean, I don't think six. he's playing for the loss yet. I mean, I, I mean, no, no. I mean, let's, let's like, you know, yeah, first of all, you can always roll snake eyes, right? Like that unit in the middle. If you just roll snake eyes, I think he just loses. I don't think, I don't think, at least on a six-turn game, I should say. On a he rolled game. Never, never three, so what did he right. need? Right, he needed a ten. Uh, he needed a ten, so that's fine. Yeah, so they're still alive, and, and I mean, they're going to take a ton of wounds next turn, so this this bottom of six obviously going to take a ton of punishment. No way so the question <laughs> is, you know, right, right, so you kind of have to... You know, if you can kill, I mean, if you can kill that mobby unit in the back, what what else can score? I mean, it's the the wing eight can score one there, mm-hmm. and the you might lose the one in the middle. Yeah, yeah. But you have a dread fiend there as well, right? So again, there's there's a lot of a lot of interesting interactions here that like because that unit in the middle is blocking in a way, right? Because you're gonna have to not only have to kill them, but you have to get within three inches. So you have to at least roll a, a two to a two or three yeah. on the overrun. Yeah. So it's not, it's a series of rolls that are going to have to happen here to kind of make it, you know, make it happen. And yeah, they're likely yeah. to happen, but, but you know, a series of unlikely events. Right. Right. You know, Red for anyone, wavered. right. For anyone that plays like blood bowl, right. You know, it's right. always that same thing. We end up, we're like, it's like, you need to roll like, like five different things in a row to happen, but you know, it's any part of that chain fails and, and it just all goes wrong. So, you know, it, it's you kind of learn to appreciate a lot of small things that, you know, sometimes don't happen. So, so when was it, the fiend wavered? He was like in the shooting phase. Oh, of shooting. yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. No, I did not see that. Okay. That okay. changes oh. things. So, if the trolls and rebel double charge the scarecrows and take it off, at least he has two chances to, to roll that d6. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, see, I was I was hoping he could get that dreadfiend into the trolls or something, but it looks yeah, like that's not going to happen. So yeah, yeah, that does limit his options a lot, actually. So because the, the dreadfiend into the trolls would really stop that, and then you're saying, yeah, right, and then it's like, okay, you're going to make your opponent, and they're going to have to fight you in combat, right? They can't shoot at him. So I mean, they're only at what 15 wounds right now. You got to get to 27 with just rabble, right? That that would have been that would have been potentially a thing that happens, but again, you know. Yeah, this game there of are, what, what could have happened versus what actually happened in reality their here. The speed of play has uh, diminished significantly. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I was thinking, just... oh, man, we can be all done by, like, 11.30. Um, right. But it's just like, no, we are not, mm. not quite. So if it was me and I was Kyle, I would move the shooters and try to take the nine shots at the Maw Beast. Because that, yeah. that, that's the target I can take off. Are and they in range, it. though? They're 30 inches. I don't think. At the moment, it's thirty-four inches away. Or oh minutes. no! So can you move six then and take the pot shot? Like yeah, what are you saying? Move six, take the pot shot, cover. Ooh. Oh, are you in get one. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter the point, right? Does it? If you get more, once you're at minus, like once you're at I thought seven, you weren't allowed to take a shot that you're at eight. Oh, nope. is that what it is? No, I, I, I think you're allowed to. It's, it, okay, it's, it's just it caps out at that. Cap okay. out at. <laughs> how often do you see that come to play, right? Like, ridiculous hmm. situation. But uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> here we oh. go. Hang on, I've got a thing for this. You be banners. <laughs> oh no. Well, that wasn't actually horrible because he needed. He needed lives. Or six. Yeah, yeah, it was. It wasn't horrible, but still. <laughs> Right, right. Uh, what about your late reroll, mate? It's, it's not a feel good. <laughs> it's, it really is not. It's a bit, bit oh, of a wow. feel bad. Oh wow! Fourteen hits. <laughs> oh, can they can they do some damage here? Five wounds. Defense four. That mm. would suck if uh, they high roll. Uh, they're not gonna pop. They've got it. They're they inspiring, mate. Nope. Yeah, no, the no. king, the the bigot is inspiring. Okay, I don't uh, think the bigot uh, inspires. Does is it? The bigot is inspiring. Okay. Yeah. He gave it inspiring. It sounds like. Um, it just says. I think it comes with it. it, it normally. It's inspiring. It's a. Yeah. It's like oh, a wow. banner bearer guy. So what's the difference between a bigot and a faggot? Bigot uh, cross more. Two attacks. Yeah. Sure. Much. 
uh, the bigot can also take a bow where a flagot can't. Sure. So the bigot's way better. Mm. That way, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. well. yeah. I don't know why yeah. you would take a flagot, right? I mean, I think um, it's 10 points. 10 points for a couple attacks, and, and is that it? Is a nerf value different or anything like that? Or? Uh, it might be 8 10 for a flagot. Trying to find the list. Looks like I lost them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I agree with Ray. Like, why? I think Bigot seems like the value is there. So, even if the game ends right now, it would be a draw because they would each have two tokens. That's no. correct. It ends right yeah, now. Yeah, yes, 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 it is. Um, hang so on. He... I, I don't want to move a thing, but I don't think the Winget is quite within scoring range yet. One, two, three. No, the Winget is not sc yet scoring. Oh, okay. Let's hope he doesn't forget that. That'd be definitely quite the rookie mistake to make. <laughs> well, I mean, he can just back up and still throw his grenades, right? Like, I feel uh, like... Of course, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. I feel, but yes. Yeah, um, yeah. And then here comes the Scarecrows, and then then he'll be just looking at what his lobbers lobbing at the shooters, I guess, and his trombones shooting at the Dread Fiends. Um, we just... It'll be interesting to see if Double Ones come into this at all. Ooh, yeah, that, and that's what you're playing for. I mean, I've seen it happen, by the way. I, I mean, I've done it myself. I, I've rolled Double Ones, <laughs> and, and I've lost the game because I had it... So sure, I had it locked up on turn six, right? I mean, um, yeah. so, I mean, these, these crazy things have happened in tournament games. I, I know I've definitely done it. Um, you know, I've, I've seen it against Ray. Ray has done it against me. I mean, uh, right? I mean, it happens all the time. So, uh, you know, we'll, let's see what happens here. Cheers, Dwarven Darkness. Shout out to Direct Misfire. Hugh oh, will yeah. be on uh, commentating tonight, I think. Yeah, Hugh's commentating my game versus uh, Paul Brown. Um, so it's Hugh, Matt Croger, and Elliot Morish, and Tom Robinson, I think. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah, it'll be a... Um, Hugh will probably... <laughs> it'll be interesting to see if it's he can not talk. a... Um, it's, <laughs> well, no, I know he can talk. I'm just thinking, will it just result in, like, devolve straight into a right. slanging match about the cricket <laughs> <Right>. or something? <laughs> um, <laughs> nice. And that's... I, all right, so you guys in the future, so that's going to happen... Yes, that's right. ...tomorrow. So, okay, yeah. Okay. Um, so the yeah. winget's moved. Winget's mm -hmm. scoring that token that now. Um, and still is able to shoot at the shooters. Oh, okay. yeah, of course. Yep. And then the catapults into the same target. Oh, yeah. Trombones into Drevdinged. And hopefully... Yeah, this might be a, this might be a table after all. We'll see. Yeah. Hmm. We'll see if it goes to seven. He's right. Maybe there's nothing left to even go there, huh? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Eye in the sky gets put on the shooters. What? Oh, yeah. What? I'm, I'm okay, shocked. So, yeah, shooting uh, trombones into the Dread Fiend. All right, that's okay. Uh, so, yeah, so he yeah, has okay. four hits. So seven, yep. Seven plus four is 11. So he's, he's on a, what, 15? No, I want to say uh, 16 that's maybe. 12. Now it's 12, 14, I think. Oh, 14. Oh, that's right. They they did lower that significantly from last. Oh no, wait. Dreadfiend's 14, 16. Uh, 14, oh, 16. 16. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So yeah, yeah. So. But is it here. within mind first range of the bigot? I don't think so. He is. No. Yep. He is. Oh, sure. 12 inch. Mistake. He left the bigot. He left yeah, the so. bigot. The firing right. range. Yeah, small small mistake there, right? Yeah. Yeah, in reality, write that down on the thing. Write that down. Thing he'll probably die anyway, but I want to write even it for down. The Stephen made a mistake, right? For the snake guys yeah. on the on the um, scarecrows, he yeah. should write the guy. Just to turn him and just march them out of there. So out of there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. So Inexcusable. That roll Inexcusable. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you can melt. Uh, well, look at that. Another hit. All right. Oh, hit look at that. Lost. Four. So three more wounds. Three more wounds. They just pile on here, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And now Next. this one. Yeah. Exactly. This is yeah. This is this is what this is rough, man. This is don't want to see. I'm, I'm just gonna put. A, I'm gonna start typing in some chats if he hits with this one. Yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, my favorite part of watching games is to to heckle here. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! You could ask uh, how he lives with himself. Yeah. How oh, we 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 are roasting him in the Aussie group chats. Okay. It's, good. Um, good. Good. Yeah. Because this was what six war machines or uh, three war machines, five you, war machines plus five. the winger. Do you count so, the blasters as a war machine? 
That's the question, no, right? Well, then three more. Kind of is, right? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they might, I mean, yeah. yeah no, right. I mean, they're not that long range. Like, they're not. Yeah, no, I wouldn't call them one. Sure, two. sure. They're not risk free. Oh, look at that. He rolled a nerve roll of. Oh, my enough. God. He rolled 12, box nine. Cars, box cars oh, and then oh. nine. Yikes. Just, just. Uh, the stench. Yeah, exactly. Okay. No, I mean, it's, it's not, it's not filthy, but it's just. Um, no, it's just, this, this is rubbing it in, right? Yeah. Like, but it's funny because you were saying in terms of the the nerve spiking and the roll spiking, like those are some good rolls there. But up until this point, the goblins haven't rolled no particularly no, 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 well. No, yeah. I mean, they did just then. Um, but yeah, it was. Um, and now we're into yeah, combat. Yeah, he only needed a four for the dread fiend. Yeah. Yeah, they, oh, you expected them to die. I mean, and again, it's 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 sometimes like you roll average dice and you're happy, right? Like it's, it's like as long yeah. as you don't roll bad, oh, yeah. like you know, it's like avoiding bad dice is yeah. Oh, absolutely. There's plenty of and top that's players. why elite and vicious are such powerful rules because yes. they really mitigate the the ability for you to have a bad roll. Um, they don't really help you do great rolls, but they really no. stop you having a shocker. And there it is. Kyle has no longer has models on the table. GG. And when GG, you go switches so forward, I assume that's enough. Now we go to seven to see if he can score the final. You, he's already got it. As long as yeah, he's, he's got the run. No, he, he wants to see if he can score this top one for the bonus point. Uh, I thought he hit, isn't the middle one worth two or? Oh, it's only oh, four. Sorry, you're right, you're right. Yeah, no, he wants to see if he can get that extra. You're right. You're right. I don't even think he got the uh, the middle can one. He get the middle one. Because he rolled he rolled one a two. Eight. No, he oh, can't. Oh, he's just short. And he rolled a one. Oh, you're right. He needs a seven. Ah, <laughs> uh, he gets a. He gets uh, a... Oh, no. So he gets a turn seven. The opponent has no models on the table, and he's gonna move his guys around, playing by himself. Kyle can walk <laughs> away from the table right now. Would not matter in the slightest. Ah, uh, well, that gets him two extra bonus points, which will shoot him up. It's a big deal. It's absolutely a big deal. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's. Two points is huge, and and he can't. There is no way to get that third, right? I mean, I don't no, think. No. Um, yeah, it looks it looks like. Uh, two points can be the difference of like five oh, tournament places. Absolutely, uh, at the moment, can't it's crazy. Pivot, 90? Yeah. Oh no, he's still out. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's not. Yeah, the only no way is his wing it could go and score that one, and then right, but he, no one gets uh, that one, right? Yeah. Then uh, that, yeah, so it's one or the other. Yep. Yeah, and he needed he needed the trolls to hit that, and then maybe he could have pivoted the. You need to roll more than one on on the overrun. Right, right, and, that, and that's one of the things I was talking about, right? Like you, you know, there's a game, you know, there's plenty of situations where you don't get that middle one, or if Kyle, you know, had more units to hold out. But, what he you know, could have done is after that scarecrow fight, is pivot the rabble, yeah, and then hope for the turn seven and just hope just for the seven, the double. Right, but that plays that plays like all for the seven versus like the you know <laughs> yeah, you know right. it's like you don't you don't always know right that in that moment that it's gonna be a seven so but um, in hindsight wins the day. yeah exactly but just just think about how different this would have been without that rabble horde if the chariots had gone oh, yeah. into it yeah absolutely I mean it was a tight game in reality I mean I know it, the result yeah. doesn't look like it but I mean. It, it was, was on a, a nice edge, tighter. right? Look, how and many wounds are on the board here, right? I mean, you had a troll horde yeah. that's sitting on, five. you know, five wounds. Five they points. had up to ten at one point. You have a rabble horde that's sitting on ten wounds. Um, I mean, uh, that, those, he... and those are your scoring units, right? I mean, basically. So, oh, hello, there. gentlemen. Oh, what is hey, that? Guys. What is that smell? <laughs> 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 it got a bit disgusting towards the end. There, didn't it? <laughs> no, we were just saying. We were just saying. Uh, first, congrats, Stephen. Um, we were saying that your rolls up until the very end were pretty average, but then they sort of really kind of spiked a bit at the end. And well yeah. done, Kyle. That was uh, that was very entertaining for what had to have been your very first time to play that list, <laughs> and the very first time that list has ever been taken in the history of the world. I will say uh, that's the first time that yeah. list ever existed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, maybe the I, last. You made him work for it. There was... Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll throw to the I'll throw to the, the, the cast first. So, uh, Benson, what did you think uh, of that? I think Kyle did very well with what he was given <laughs> against these goblins as well. Um, it was quite tight towards the end. And it was a bit, I think it had us all questioning whether or not there was going to be an upset. Um, but I think, well played. You were pushing it uphill from the beginning. And, yeah, unfortunately, it just kind of collapsed at the end. Uh, what about you, Ray? Um, 
Stephen, this was a bit of a seesaw uh, at the start. I came in like at the end of the first turn. I thought you were in trouble. Uh, I thought Kyle had it. Uh, Thomas was cheering for you because he was upset that uh, Kyle did not bring anything dinosaur related. <laughs> yeah. And then went to bed. So that, that was fine. He was disgusted and went to bed because there was no dinosaurs on the table. But yeah. I, I thought it was I thought it was Kyle, then I thought it was you, and it just seesawed throughout the battle. And there were a couple of key t turning points that I know we're going to discuss later. Yeah, it was. I th I thought it was actually a really close game, which is kudos to Kyle for, Kyle for playing a really tight game, um, taking thought, some unconventional units. We thought it was a draw basically on turn two. We're like, I feel like it's going to be a draw, and we're like, yeah, I feel like it's going to be a draw, and then three, four, five, all the way through. Right. And, uh, and no. any thoughts, Alex, before we start yeah. going into the, uh, the book of mistakes? Sure, <laughs> sure. I mean, um, as fun as that is, I think, honestly, the score of this game to me does not reflect the like the way it played out because your units yeah. have so many wounds on them. They're so close to dying in different moments that, it, uh, you know, I see a scenario where, like, you know, there's nothing left on the table except for one unit, maybe, or just one machine. So, um, but yeah. no, congrats to Steven. You, you, I think you played it right, you know, overall and, and did the right game plan. So, Good job, and good job, Kyle, as well. So, um, running back to that aforementioned register of mistakes, there's there's two in particular that I want to talk about. Um, the first one I'll throw to Kyle, and then the second to uh, Stephen. Kyle, the uh, token that was sitting on the hill that's over to the left here. So yeah. I'm wa waggling my mouse around. <laughs> Should you have deleted that a turn earlier? Oh, it was in my books to delete it, and then I went, "No, I don't need to delete that. There's no reason to delete it." And then I turned up the hill, and I went, "Oh, hey, I." I I should have deleted that token. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. It was it was literally take the hill, delete the token, and charge off and then never look back. And I was like, oh I forgot it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so that was that was the thing we looked at. We thought like I thought maybe by not deleting it you were meaning to leave one of your sniffs up there to sort of sit behind the hill and take it, but no, it, it just seemed like you just sort of straight up forgot it and then had to go back yeah, and straight, straight up forgot. take it. Yeah. Because we were thinking what would this whole game look like if the chariots had charged and deleted, say, a horde of rabble before they died, because the chariots were gonna die. Um, and then that sort of changes things a lot. Um so Stephen uh, yeah. Setting up your trolls to have their derriers tickled by the ogre warlord was that a mistake, or did you just with that think, last couple plays? Uh, <laughs> I I was perhaps a bit um, bit optimistic about the war beast or what the more beast could do. I, I did I did see that was going to come. Um, I, I guess I just have this. Sometimes I'm willing to take on too many risks, and and perhaps and I think the main goal at that point was. What if the worst happens and I lose both rabble hordes really quickly? I need the trolls in the center. So it was kind of a risk versus reward. So if the Ogre Warlord had, had uh, wavered, and I think he was one off wavering in the end, um, yeah. that would have been fine. In the end, and in the end, it was maybe like a 50 50 whether those trolls got what got routed. So I got a bit lucky yeah. in the result. Um, sure. But it was but only a bit like only a bit lucky, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Like I think um, having the trolls in the center, like setting them up so they could march that way, I guess was my priority. Okay. Mm. Match, and what, the legion coming in. What were you thinking with a regiment of more beast doing a hindered and an ensnared charge on hunters? <laughs> so that, that's it. Look, walk me through yeah. your thought process there. Yeah, hoping for one or two wounds and then a waiver. Because I think they were already what, seven or eight wounds? Yeah, yeah, they had wounds on them. Some okay. BS blaster charge into the woods and in the <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, and actually, I'll go back to you, Kyle. Um, your Dread Fiend coming down the side of the board and, you know, that... Um, why? I guess we were wondering why you didn't charge the more beasts, why you just let the more beasts charge you. So the, uh, the thought process was if I... So the mob beast can always just keep backing up back out of range, right? With their their speed six plus wild charge D3, they have a 15-inch threat bubble. They have an average of a 14-inch threat bubble. With the speed six, they can always back up three. So either we play infinite chess on the right side, where there's no tokens, and I don't have the bodies to dispose. Um, I do that with mob beasts all the time. I'm just like, look, do you want to play? Do you not want to play? I don't care. Um, my thought was that the uh, ensnare horde was in a position where I might take maybe you know, we'll call it five wounds from the blaster tops, but probably none at all. The blaster probably misses 
then the hunters pick up the blaster and I turn to face this fresh mobbies uh, regiment. So take the dreadfin around the bottom, and then I have this stealthy, nimble unit strength to shove up on turn five or turn six. Uh, little did I know those war trombones uh, were sighted in by elves. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to waver. But that was the thought was if I can get him to take a hindered charge, I can nimble away and I have effectively traded up in the game of chess, right? I, I got my unit strength closer to the token. I'm faster and I don't see a mob beast regiment beating hunters in the woods. Um, it ended up working that way. Um, I still died, but technically my plan worked flawlessly till the end when it didn't. <laughs> sure, those those waivers at the end were uh, were quite cruel. Because mm -hmm. um, uh, that yeah. dread, uh, that dread not being next to the rabble, actually, the dread would have been a waiver. And then it also right that's uh, that's you know, that couldn't charge say uh, the wing end or to move into the trolls if the trolls bounce. So there's there's a lot of things, but mostly my goal was to pack it right behind the rabble horde to give it dread, and then just put an extra point on the table and if it went to seven run off and try and score that top token so you yeah, don't yeah. think that the dread fiend could have killed those more beasts by the end of turn three i think it could have killed them but it also has a good chance not to and then they on a retaliation will kill it right 12 attacks on threes crush one vicious if i don't waver those mob beasts the dread fiend dies and i lose the chess outright so it's better for me to run away and give a chance of uh recuperating um, yeah. The Dread Fiend actually has a, a, a small joke. Um, like I said, I was originally going to take the Flying Hero, but it didn't feel ogre-ish. And like <laughs> three different people I was talking to were like, I bet you're going to face War Machines now. Because <laughs> there's no way to get past all that thickness to get to the catapults. It's one of the reasons the rabble and uh, catapult gun line is so strong is you just can't get to them. Yeah, yeah. Especially against ogres where everything's height three. You oh, can hit, just I shoot over the top. Mm. <laughs> Kyle, would you ever use this list again? My list? Yes. Uh, at 2300, I think it gets a lot stronger because I can fill out the weakness of the list, which is it doesn't have the uh, the deployable part. So I could bring two rabble regiments and another sniff troop as a screen, and, and then all of a sudden I don't feel like I'm stuck anymore. Um, but the answer is, yeah, I, I think there's actually something to this one. I really enjoyed playing it and it worked a lot better than I thought it was going to work against what I would consider a, a pretty strong counter to the list style I brought. Mm. So yeah, I think it's cool. I mean, I thought it was, I thought you played it well. Um, I mean, we talked about already about some of the, you know, decisions that could have gone otherwise. Um, but yeah, I mean, what, what, uh, I know you talked about adding rabble to the list. Like, how do you, how do you like that list against like, you know, maybe undead or things like that that you see out there? Um, so one of the things that'll probably change is the shooter, the double shooter horde in the warlock was brought because I was told bring a shooter core, and the the whole point of these fun things is that's the challenge, that's the way to make it work. Um, I think that shooter core turns into boomers. I need the the mobility and the flexibility of boomers outweighs because if I face a dragon, this list falls apart. I have no yeah. response for a dragon here. Yep. But two right. boomer hordes don't care about much; they can move, or you know, you take a boomer horde and just more chariots. Who knows? But the, the shooters go away. Um, I don't like shooting play style. I mean, you guys have seen my goblins. It's basically just how many melee dice can I cram into a list. So I've seen it, yeah. I'll play, I'll I'll play uh, Steven's list again. I'll play that list all day. <laughs> um, <laughs> one of the um, other mistakes that we were talking about in the game was uh, with the with the wing it being able to clog up the chariots so it wouldn't be able to, they wouldn't be able to back up and delete that um, that counter on the top of the hill on the left so that was something that um we were talking about what what difference that could have made in the game keeping that counter up there yep mm. and then i didn't pivot the uh the scarecrows far enough and they oh, actually yeah. weren't contesting the token and he was able to just not charge and blow it up so in the end he killed me but that's something where i should have never let him destroy a token that i had an ensnare horde in the woods on so it was a really fun game steven's a great opponent uh, Australia has always proven challenging for me. I'm from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, uh, guys. Thanks for letting us watch your game. Um, and thanks to all the commentators who um, said 
said things. Said um, things. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, <laughs> uh, I will just run the outro music and then end the broadcast if I figure out how to do that. Okay. It's a clicky thing. So Good game, guys. Well done, Steve. All right, see you guys. Thank you. Guys.